It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS from a frenzied atmosphere here in Columbia, South Carolina. The 10th ranked Gamecocks set to do battle with the defending national champions, the Auburn Tigers. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston, who is working the sidelines for us all afternoon, will join us in a moment. Auburn will kick as we are just about ready to go from that thrilling finish in Annapolis, Maryland. We are in SEC country, east meets west here in Columbia this afternoon. Parker's kick fielded by Stephon Gilmore at about the six. Gilmore has some real estate out past the 30 and finally brought down at the 35-yard line after a return of 27 yards. Steven Garcia, the 50-year senior, the quarterback who has had a tumultuous five years here in Columbia. You see what he did last weekend. The two first quarter interceptions, Steve, uh, really a harbinger of what was to come. Four picks in that game. A 21-3 victory over Vanderbilt, but uh, not his finest hour without a doubt. Garcia will work from the shotgun on first and 10 from the 34. Able to find his man Alshon Jeffrey. Outside, nice pickup on first down. We take a look at our starting lineups presented by Chick fil A. First for the offensive side of the football for Steve Spurrier's Gamecocks. We see how they line up up front. Mike Matulis, the freshman summoned today due to some injuries that they've had along their offensive front. Alshon Jeffrey, consensus All America candidate, not quite having the year that they expected him to have so far through four weeks is their featured wide receiver. This is second and six from about the 37. Marcus Lattimore, the long set back. Lattimore trying to bust it up the gut out past the 40, but that Auburn defensive front that has had all kinds of issues this season able to hold its ground. Kenneth Carter with the tackle. Nosa Igwe headlines their front four. You see the linebackers under defensive coordinator Ted Roof and the secondary Nico Thorpe who has become the leader of that group the starter at the strong safety position this will be third and four for the Gamecocks from their own 40. Garcia going sideline too far in front for Jeffrey and South Carolina will punt. And right there you saw an, an example of what I think we're going to see a lot of today out of South Carolina. They're, they're going to try and get the ball to Alshon Jeffrey on the outside when they do throw it. But the wild card in this game, Spiro, is the quarterback, Steven Garcia. You talked about last week, four interceptions against Vanderbilt. Disastrous day. And I, I feel like if he doesn't get this thing going early as a quarterback, Steve Spurrier might have a quick hook with him today. Well, Connor Shaw, the sophomore, is the number two quarterback here. Shaw actually saw the field late in their 21-3 victory here over Vanderbilt last weekend. Connor barely able to get it away. Quan Bray among the return men. Deep penalty marker flies at about the 25-yard line. The ball is loose inside the 15. And let's see what the referees say here. Well, I think they're going to call uh, South Carolina did not give the fair catch with man enough room to catch that football. It was actually deflected. He got inside that circle. It should be another 15-yard penalty uh, tacked on to where that ball would have been caught. Matt Moore, a referee here in Columbia. Kick catch interference. Number 91 of the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. What's well, Walker in a Bennett is the one that right there just, just went a little bit too close. The ball bounced off his helmet, but yeah, no doubt about it. That was a fair catch. You've got to give him Basically a yard circumference around him to make that catch. Well, meantime, Barrett Trotter, a redshirt junior, the man who's trying to replace the legend, Cam Newton. Roomed with Newton all last season. See what he did in their 30 to 14 victory last Saturday over Florida Atlantic. So excellent field position for the Tigers to start right at the 50 on first and 10. Michael Dyer trying to bounce to the outside, but the Gamecocks are there as Dyer may have lost yardage. Starting lineups presented by Chick-fil-A. Meantime for the Auburn offensive starters. 
We'll see how they line up. Up uh, front, Reese Dismukes, the youngest player on this roster, just 18 years of age, the true freshman. Emory Blake headlining the wide receiving core for Auburn. What a start to his 2011 campaign. He's caught a touchdown in seven straight games dating back to last season. This is Michael Dyer. Uh, second and 11, right up the middle, inside South Carolina territory for four yards. Defensively for the Gamecocks, Melvin Ingram. The 50-year senior at one defensive end. Linebackers, Antonio Allen, the senior from Florida. And a secondary featuring Stephon Gilmore at one quarterback position. This is third and seven. Trotter under pressure, finds his man, Ontario McCaleb. He's got the first down and much more inside the 25-yard line after a huge first down pass play for 23 yards. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a very, very nicely set up screen pass to the left side. You see McCaleb, he doesn't even move on the left side of your screen. He just kind of stands there. In fact, the whole left side of the offensive line for Auburn didn't even move. And it set up very well. South Carolina over pursued to the ball. First down carry for Michael Dyer. This two-headed monster, Steve, between Dyer and Ontario McCaleb. McCaleb, that perimeter speed guy, and then Dyer busting it up the gut with some of his powerful runs. You got it right. Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, and that is the focus, complete focus of this South Carolina defense all day. This is second and nine. Dyer on the give from Trotter. Cut down short of the 20 and brought down at the 21 yard line after a pickup of two yards. So Michael Dyer, the sophomore, Little Rock, Arkansas native. College football fans, of course, recall him. What a season last year, the freshman MVP of the national championship game. And this year he's the third leading rusher in the SEC, averaging 106 yards per game. Surprisingly powerful inside for a guy of his size. Auburn going Harry up on third and six. Trotter again hit as he throws. It's caught by Blake inside the 10. And another Auburn first down. A late penalty marker is thrown. Thirteen yards through the air. Trotter to Blake. That was another very well executed screen pass by Auburn. After the play. Personal foul, number six of the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, look at this. You're going to see the offensive lineman for Auburn literally let South Carolina run right through the line untouched. Emory Blake just doing that quick outside screen, catches the ball, ball right on the numbers. The key for that play is that the quarterback gives that receiver a chance to catch the ball on the run. Great job by Barrett Trotter and Emory Blake. Oh, what a start for this Auburn offense. After their defense held their ground, they keep it on the ground with Dyer inside the five and brought down after a pickup of maybe a half yard. Now this is not surprising to see Auburn moving the football like they are. They've been pretty efficient offensively, scoring over 30 points a game. They need to because their, their defense has been basically not even on the field in terms of stopping people. There's Gene Chizik, third year at the helm of the Tigers. Trotter flushed out of the pocket. It's incomplete. And it will be third and goal for Auburn. Let's take a look now at the Verizon red zone. And if you want to know what's going on in the red zone, Spiro, this is a fairly efficient Auburn team in the red zone. 58% of the time they come away with touchdowns. That's what you want. You surely don't want to settle on field goals every time down, and Auburn's pretty, pretty good at it. Ninth play of the drive. They're two for two on third downs. This is third and goal. Trotter, play action, incomplete. Philip Lutzenkirk in the intended target. Wow, this is one that Barrett Trotter wants back. Lutzenkirk was wide open in the flat. The play action held the inside, uh, held the linebackers to the inside. Lutzenkirk, and it was a miscommunication, I think. I believe Barrett Trotter really thought that Lutzenkirk was going to keep running to the flat. He kind of pulled up, and the ball ends up going off his fingertips. That was an opportunity missed for Auburn. Well, one of the most powerful legs in the SEC on to attempt a little chip shot field goal here. Cody Parkey. Plenty of distance. And Parkey is good from 21 yards out. 
So Auburn's defense holding its ground, Gurley. And then the offense led by Barrett Trotter off to the 3 0 lead. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great SEC rivalries. It's all about Early score here in Columbia, South Carolina, 10-12 left to play in the first. And the Auburn Tigers off and running with a 3-0 lead. Spiro Ditas alongside former Notre Dame star Steve Berline. We talked about the youth on this Auburn team. For a lot of these kids, it's their first taste of a road game in conference play. Good start. Oh, and what a place to get your first taste here in South Carolina. This is an awesome place to play football. I know from experience, I got a chance to play here when I was at Notre Dame. It is as wild as it gets. They'll be tested today. All right, as we are ready now for the ensuing kickoff, we see the rivalry notes between these two teams. Steve Spurrier looking for his first victory against Auburn in his seven-year tenure here in Columbia. It was the 11th all-time meeting between these two programs. And in a lot of ways, Steve, both of these teams still trying to figure out just what they have. Auburn, of course, the youth trying to come back defending their national championship. A team laden a year ago with those 24 senior players. And meantime for South Carolina, a team loaded with talent, certainly on the defensive side of the football, but can they solve their offensive woes this season? Cody Parkey's booming kick through the end zone, and Stephon Gilmore is signaling for the fair catch. Auburn going 10 plays, 48 yards, just over three minutes. Capped by the 21-yard field goal by Parkey. And that's where we stand, 3-0 Auburn. Well, Spear, when you look at this South Carolina team, 4-0 to this point, ranked 10th in the country, but they have not scored first in any of their games to this point. Obviously, today, Auburn keeping that run going. Five times they've scored after their opponent. They've only scored seven points in the first quarter this whole season, so that's an area they really need to focus on. They're playing behind, from behind, an awful lot. A quick snap. Didn't look like Garcia was quite ready for it. But they pick up good yardage on first down, nonetheless, close to the 30 after a run of nine yards. I guarantee you, Stephen Garcia did not know that snap was coming. It's lucky it hit him right in the gut. Look at he's looking. All of a sudden, that ball hits him. He doesn't know what to do with it. But it almost was uh, looked like a designed quarterback sweep. Fortunately, caught Auburn off guard because nobody was ready. Garcia has thrown seven interceptions this season, the most of any quarterback in the country. And four last week against Vandy. This is second and short. Marcus Lattimore with the first down run and more. Well, we mentioned some of the issues. Auburn saying, Auburn's they saying they have the football here. No signal from our officials. And they do say Auburn football. That does not happen very often. Marcus Lattimore, I believe, the best running back in the country. He is a workhorse, a beast up inside, and that ball just kind of, boy, I'll tell you, I don't know whether his knees hit first. They're going to look at that, I'm sure, because it looked like that ball squirted out kind of late. He's got that ball secured right now. It started to come out. You could see that ball starting to get out of his control a little bit. The question is whether his knees hit first before that ball started to pop out. Boy, that's a tough one, Spiro. I don't know. It's... Well, Marcus Lattimore, who in very short order has become one of the premier running backs in the country with a very uncharacteristic mistake, and now the play under review. There's no doubt you can see that that ball is coming out before the ball hits the ground, before his shoulders and chest and upper body hits the ground. The question is, when did those knees hit? Now the call on the field is a fumble and a recovery by Auburn. And now they'll need conclusive video evidence to overturn that call. Steve Spurrier, this is not the way he wanted to start the football game. A three and out for his team initially and then giving up three points, trailing Auburn and turning the ball over in their own end of the field would be about as bad as it could get for that man right there. 
There's Gene Chizik, who's had a charm life so far. What a three year start at Auburn. Led the Tigers to their first national championship in 53 years. Once again, the play under review, a fumble recovered by the Auburn defense. There's our referee, Matt Moore. Let's take another look at it here. I just don't see enough Spiro to, to overturn this. As we know, it's got to be very clear. It's got to be conclusive that it's the opposite of what the call made was. And I just don't know if you can tell whether that knee hit before the ball started to come out. Kenneth Carter was the man who punched the football free. And Jonathan Mincy, the redshirt freshman, made the recovery. Now this is an offense or defense for Auburn that has been absolutely torched all year. Last in the SEC in yards allowed, 477 yards per game, last in the in the league in points allowed, giving up over 30 points a game. And this is the kind of thing against a highly ranked team. You get off to a start like this, that ball pops out. If they get a turnover for their offense to start this game out. I'll tell you, Steve, what it, do you think? From I, that angle, it looks like the ball's coming out before his knee hit the ground. I'm still not convinced that it really was. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Yeah, I think I don't think it was it was clearly coming loose before his knee hit, but it was definitely coming loose right about the same time that knee did hit. So I think it's the right call since it was ruled a fumble on the field. You can't overturn that unless you're 100% sure. Huge break for Auburn. So this young Auburn team on the road up 3-0, trying to capitalize on a Marcus Lattimore fumble on first and 10. This is Michael Dyer. Minimal gain, maybe a yard. As we approach nine minutes to play in this first quarter. Well, Auburn made it clear to us when we were talking to them earlier this week that they want to control the tempo of this game. They want to, they want to get a lot of plays in. This is second and nine. A little end around action. They're going to go to the airways near side. It's intercepted. Picked off at the 15 yard line. As the Gamecocks defense not falling for the trickery. Oh, that's Antonio Allen with the pick. And a little, little trickery, like you said, you're going to see. Coming out of the backfield, the handoff, and then the reverse. And it's going to be Quan Bray coming out of the backfield. He looks like he's wide open, and I think that is what gave the perception he was wide open. But a little bit thrown inside, a little bit underthrown, and you had a great step-up play by Antonio Allen bringing that ball, and he really didn't even know the ball was coming. He just turned, and it was a happy birthday. 16 yards of the return, and Antonio Allen has South Carolina in business when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Aflac. Toyota. Liberty Mutual. And by AT&T. Auburn and South Carolina exchanging turnovers. 3-0 lead for the visiting Tigers with 8.48 to play in his first quarter. This week, Dave's all new with George Clooney and Hugh Jackman. And Monday, don't miss Sting. That's followed by The Late Show with Craig Ferguson, all new, only on CBS. Spiro Ditas, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston, our entire CBS crew from Columbia, South Carolina. Early turnover committed by Steven Garcia's Gamecocks offense. And then their defense getting it right back on an interception by the linebacker Antonio Allen. And now South Carolina will take over first and 10 from just outside their own 30. And that's kind of heartbreaking for the Auburn defense, Spiro, when you talk about the motive, the, 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 the enthusiasm and the momentum is created by that turnover. And then all of a sudden to give it right back, defense has got to go back down on the field. It's kind of heart-wrenching for him. 
Garcia completes to Alshon Jeffrey, trying to get him more involved in this offense. And I mentioned earlier that Jeffrey, Steve, has not had the impact that Steve Spurry was hoping for. And that's uh, not really his fault. Garcia, of course, has struggled. They've been playing with leads, so the passing game uh, hasn't been featured as much as they probably will need to later. But uh, had a great season a year ago as he tries to pick up where he left off. Uh, he's the guy they need to get involved in the passing game. He's got to get his confidence back up. Steven Garcia's got to make plays up the field. This guy's got over a 17-yard average. they just got to get the ball to him. He had 88 catches a year ago through just four games this season. 14 receptions on second and five. Lose a yard, it'll be third down coming up. Well, we've alluded to his performance last week, Stephen Garcia. Look at that ball right there, thrown off his back foot, up for grabs, down the field, and right there, on, not on the same page at all with the receiver. And that third one was really bad, rolling out to the outside. You see, Steve Spurrier, all I can say is, are you kidding me? You just can't do that and expect to win at this level. Marcus Lattimore, the lone setback. This is Garcia. From the shotgun on third and six, it's caught. That's Brandon Wilds, the freshman and South Carolina native for the first down run inside Auburn territory. A uh, nice job by Steven Garcia finding his check down. One of the things that causes him the most problems, and I'm going to be watching it close today, is his footwork. He gets a little happy footed back there, and that ends up making him, number one, late getting rid of the ball, but number two, puts him in bad position to deliver the ball, either up the field or checking it down. His feet just aren't in the right position. 14 yards. Garcia to Wilds for the first time today. This is first and 10. Garcia airing it out near side. What a catch by Jeffrey inside the five touchdown. <laughs> 50 yards and the Gamecocks take their first lead. Ask and you shall receive, huh, Spiro? Look at that. We're talking about it. You give the big man six foot four, 229 pounds, a chance to make a play up over anybody, if you ask me. Give him a chance to do that three or four times a game. And the point after attempt is blocked by Auburn. Boy, we have seen just about everything so far in this first quarter. You tell me, Spiro, do you think there's any defensive back in the country that can get up and get a ball as high as this guy right here? I mean, he is a man-child on the outside. It got away with a little bit of a push-off there at the end, but not enough to throw the flag. What a great play. Alshon Jeffrey, the consensus All-America candidate, climbing the ladder. And to Charvon Bell, a tough, tough job covering him one-on-one -on -one all over the field. Garcia's reaction, 6-3, to three, South Carolina. Six to three here in Columbia, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Moving in front for the first time today on an incredible 50-yard touchdown hookup between Steven Garcia and his All-America wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey. Bancox goes 69 yards, four plays in just under two minutes. Second touchdown of the season for Jeffrey and the 17th of his three-year career. You know who needed to see that as much as anybody on the field. Not only Jeff Gar Steven Garcia, and Alshon Jeffrey, but Steve Spurrier, he needed to see something good out of his passing game, a reason to believe that Steven Garcia can take this team where he wants him to take him. And one thing we have not mentioned is the fact that Steven Garcia, Steve, is playing with a heavy heart today. His grandfather passing away earlier this week in Tampa. Garcia got emotional during our meeting with him here yesterday. But uh, playing with a heavy heart, a lot in his mind, of course, with his family back in Tampa and the responsibility of trying to get this South Carolina team to their fifth victory. Bouncing kick fielded by Quan Bray inside the 10. He's dumped down at the 20 after a return of 12 yards. 
Well, following tonight's showdown in Gainesville between Alabama and Florida on CBS, Gary Danielson answers your college football questions live from the SEC on CBS Cruiser. Watch the fifth quarter at CBSSports.com slash Gary. Now this play, you, you never know whether a play like this is going to be significant during the course of a game, but an extra point, a lot of people take it for granted. Boy, that was just right up the middle. It was Corey, Corey Lemonier came through untouched. Big play in the game. This is first and ten. Trotter pump faking to the sideline, tucks it away, and picks up three yards on first down. Well, we've already seen how missed extra points have factored into today's games around the country. A wild finish in Annapolis earlier today on CBS. As in overtime, it was Air Force outlasting Navy. And the difference in that game, Steve, a blocked extra point attempt. It's amazing how those things come back to haunt you. Ontario McCaleb takes the pitch on second and seven. They lose three yards as Antonio Allen, who had the pick, comes up and makes the stop for a loss. This South Carolina defense has underperformed by their own standards this year so far. But I'll tell you what, their front seven matches up, I believe, athletically with any defense in the country. They can run, they can hit, they're big and fast. That was a great example by Antonio Allen right there. There's Trotter from the shotgun on third and ten. He's set. Melvin Ingram got to him first, and Auburn will punt. Uh, this guy is the one I'm talking. This is the most impressive of all. Number six, Melvin Ingram, used his patented spin move. Watch him. He starts to the right and then spins back to the left on the inside, right there, up the gut. It's just so hard for an offensive lineman to counter that speed inside. Melvin Ingram, the player of the week in the SEC last week for his performance against Vanderbilt. Ingram, the national defensive player of the week. What a four-week start he has had to his season. The 50-year senior, Stephon Gilmore, signals for the fair catch at the South Carolina 37. A 45-yard punt by Stephen Clark. Timeout in Columbia, 6 to nothing. Game Gamecocks. So the SEC West has produced three of the last four national champions, 2007. LSU's two-loss squad beating Ohio State in the BCS title game, 2009. Nick Saban and Alabama, perfect 14-0. And then, of course, last season, Cam Newton leading undefeated Auburn to its second-ever national championship and first title in 53 years. Here in South Carolina, 6-3. The Gamecocks in front. Able to punch it in on a 50-yard strike between Steven Garcia and Alshon Jeffrey. Their point after attempt was blocked. And that's where we stand right now. Six to three with 509 left in this first quarter. And this is the first of four consecutive games against top 20 teams for Gene Chizik and the Auburn Tigers. Tough place to start a run here in Columbia with a team in South Carolina. Start of the season, the highest ranked in the country that it's ever been. 12th in the country. Moved up to number 10, and they've got a great opportunity to really, really make a difference in control of this SEC East. Well, this is the part of their game that has been a huge question mark this season. Their defense, Marco Thrawn at the 40. After a nice pickup on first down, five yards to the tight end, Justice Cunningham. Matt Moore, our referee here in Columbia. Offsides, number 55 of the defense, five yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. That's Corey Lemonier, the sophomore defensive end whistled. But Steve, we talked about some of their defensive woes. You rarely see a marquee team, certainly not a defending national champion, have the issues defensively that this Auburn team has had, historically bad in certain areas, especially with their run defense. This is Garcia on first and five after the penalty. That's Bruce Ellington on the end around, but nothing doing. Let's go to New York. A John Hancock update.
All right, Spiro, over on the CBS Sports Network, uh, SMU and TCU getting with it. Here's J.J. McDermott. June Jones loves to air it out. Going to Terrence Wilkerson, 71 yards to strike. In the battle for the iron skillet, the Ponies have the lead, 14 to nothing. Back to you. How about them Ponies? Getting it going out there. June Jones getting the SMU Mustangs going. Busy day in college football around the country. SEC battle here in Columbia East meeting West. End around play. That's Demir Burr, the freshman, who today is making his South Carolina debut after serving an NCAA mandated four game suspension. There's Bird right there. He's going to come around, but watch the, the defense for Auburn. They do not get caught up in the in the action going to the right they keep their discipline they keep the contain on the outside down here Demir Bird who is a speedster Steve Spurrier Jr. told me they're going to try and find ways to get this guy the ball in the open field but great discipline by Alvin right there in defense this is third and four Garcia from the shotgun Garcia feels the pocket collapse rolling near side leapfrogs the defender and has the first down inside Auburn territory Well, Steven Garcia, he's a guy that's had a very up and down, topsy turvy career here in South Carolina. Fans don't know whether to love him or hate him, but I'll tell you, you play football with that kind of passion right there, that kind of desire, they're going to be on your side, I guarantee you. Mike Matulis has whistled for the holding penalty. It's always a sign of an offense struggling. You finally break through with a big play. Steven, it's called back with a penalty. And that's the true freshman, Mike Matulis, making his first start in place of Kyle Nunn, the senior who's out with injury. Got a bad back. It's the third South Carolina penalty, totaling 29 yards. This is third and 14. Auburn coming with a blitz, and they dump Garcia to 32. It was Darren Bates, the linebacker, who got there first for Auburn. I want you to watch. This is something Steven Garcia's got to see. Right here, you're going to have one-on-one -on -one coverage. You're going to just run a hitch route over here. And up at the top, there's going to be a hitch route, too. Steven Garcia has to see the, the pressure come and feel it and know where his quick safety valves are on the outside. If he's got to make that quick throw, it was his own blitz by the Auburn Tigers. They got quick pressure on him. He's got to know where his outlet is and get rid of that football. Joey Scribner Howard barely able to get the punt off. Juan Bray fielding from his own 26. He'll lose yardage. And what a performance so far by Antonio Allen. Already with an interception. Has the tackle there. Wednesday on CBS, the new boss is tested. Ted Danson stars in a new CSI. That's Wednesday only on CBS. 42 yard punt. They lose three yards on the return. As Barrett Trotter will be on the sidelines here, Kyle Frazier, the freshman from Springdale, Arkansas, onto the field for the first time today. Frazier faking the draw play, sneaking forward after a pickup of about three yards, maybe four. Well, they like this kid, Kyle Frazier, the freshman. Starting to get his number called a bit more. Steve, as they build a package around this young man who's got all kinds of skills, we know he could run it, and he's got a strong arm as well. You just have the sense that Gene Chizik is just waiting for this guy to get to the point where he really figures out what's going on because he is an athlete. He can do so many things to a defense. Frazier stays onto the field. Tucks it away again out past the 30 up to the 35-yard line and right at the first down marker. After a pickup of seven, back to New York in a John Hancock update with Tim Brando. All right, Spiro. Well, total offense and scoring offense. The leader, Georgia Tech. Paul Johnson's club gets Tevin Washington this time in the air to David Sims. A nine-yard strike there rolling North Carolina State. Back to you. Here in Columbia, this is first and ten. Michael Dyer off the gut, picks up two yards. Tackle made by Melvin Ingram. As we approach the final 60 seconds, 6 to 3 Gamecocks. South Carolina, the 10th ranked team in the country. Auburn, meantime, 
On the road for the first time in SEC play this season. Trotter from the shotgun on second and eight. Fakes the give to McCaleb. Trotter slings it to the sideline. It's caught for the first down at the South Carolina 40, a pickup of 16 yards. Really, really nice poise by Barrett Trotter on that play. He was actually trying to throw after the action to the right, trying to get it back to Ontario McCaleb on the left sideline. But, boy, he did a good job coming off and finding his receiver down the field. It was Jay Wisner, the little U senior wideout. On the reception, here's Dyer on first down to the 35-yard line, a pickup of five. Well, we can talk about all the issues we want with the Auburn defense. The offense has looked good so far, despite that one turnover. At least they've moved the football. Here's Dyer on the draw play. Keeps those legs churning inside the 35, close to the marker at the 33-yard line. Spiro, we talked about the tempo that Auburn wants to set. Look at, look at the pace they're getting up to the line of scrimmage. That last snap was snapped with 32 seconds left on the 40-second clock. This one here, we're at 35 right now. This is first and 10, Dyer. Down to the 25, picks up six more yards. And they just try to wear down a defense. They try to catch you out of position. They try to create doubt, confusion. And here we go again, another snap. This is second down. Dyer, the workhorse now, down to 20 seconds to play in a quarter. Picks up a couple. And it'll be third and short. Gamecocks and their fans here trying to rev up the volume as Auburn will watch the remaining ticks come off the clock as we reach the end of the first quarter here in Columbia. The score, South Carolina 6 and Auburn 3 will return after this word from your local station. You're watching the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Start of the second quarter here in Columbia with South Carolina leading Auburn 6-3. to three. Spiro Didis and Steve Berline with you here in the booth. Auburn, a young team we talked about, but they've been able to move the football, Steve. Now can they finish some of these drives? I mean, that's what it comes down to in a game like this. You're on the road. You've got to find a way to move the chains, convert third downs. They've got a big one right now, third and three, almost into the red zone. They've got to find a way to answer South Carolina and get a touchdown, not settle for a field goal again. Critical third and three, Kyle Frazier, the freshman, has the first down inside the 10. Is he in? And the officials say just shy of the goal line. It'll be first and goal, a pickup of 20. Uh, what a great call coming out of the break. You get your athletic freshman in there, faking the handoff to the right side. Boy, look at him get up into that hole, and he can outrun most of these guys to the outside. Good call stop just short of the goal line at the one yard line. What a big third down conversion that was. And what a change of pace that Frazier brings to this offense. Now Barrett Trotter, the starter under center, on first and goal from inside the one. This is Michael Dyer into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn. Well, I don't care how you look at it, Spiro. You can, you can knock this Auburn team for what they've done so far this year. They're 3-1. and one. Most teams would be pretty happy with that. They've won 17 of their last 18 games. Gene Chizik does a great job getting his team ready to play with or without Cam Newton. This is a team that steps on the field and expects to win ball games. The previous play was ruled a touchdown. It's under further review. So the one-yard touchdown run by Michael Dyer under review here. Early stages, second quarter, as we take another look. Now, Mr. Inside, Michael Dyer, look at him power the football up in there. If it does stand, it would be his seventh touchdown of the year. I'll tell you, pretty stout by that defensive front, South Carolina. Not, you know, I don't know. That, that, that ball could be spotted short because it's not where the ball ends up. It's where the ball is when his knee or lower body contacts the ground. And he was spinning backwards. You got a good angle right here. We'll watch and see where that knee is, or where that ball is when his knee hits the ground. He'll be spinning out of here in just a second. There it is. Look at that right. Okay, here it comes. 
and he's down right there. Yeah, I, I believe the ball, boy, I believe that ball, if it's anything, close. it's spotted right on that edge of the goal line. Again, if any part of the football breaks the plane right. before his body hits the ground, it's a touchdown. Exactly right. And the call on the field is touchdown, so now they'll need conclusive evidence to overturn that call. Let's With 14.33 to play before halftime. If it's not a touchdown, it's on the one-inch line. Michael Dyer, the sophomore Arkansas native, who had a freshman year last year. That was just remarkable. After further review, the runner was down. The ball will be placed at the six-inch yard line, second down. Well, I think Auburn got robbed there. I think it should be at the one-inch yard line. <laughs> I'll tell you, I mean, it is really close. You see, boom, right there. All right. The ball did not cross. I think it's closer than six inches. But... Dyer third in the SEC in rushing. And I would venture to say you're going to see him up inside one more time right here. He's your go-to guy in this situation. Very, very dependable with the football. This is second and goal. Dyer on the direct snap, lunges end zone. Touchdown. And Auburn retakes the lead early here in the second. Well, that was kind of a, a, a little wildcat version here. You've never seen Michael Dyer take a snap. At least I haven't seen in what I've looked at with Auburn this year. Michael Dyer taking the direct snap and going straight ahead over the top. No doubt about that one. This will be Cody Parkey on for the point after. So Auburn's offense after a touchdown second missed extra point. South Carolina had one blocked and Parkey just hit the upright. You know, I, I mean, this is, I don't think I've ever seen a game with great conditions, of course, where you've got two missed extra points. You know, Parkey, that booming leg just off target. 9-6 Auburn. A wild start here in Columbia, 9-6 Auburn. Early stages of this second quarter. Tuesday on CBS, she's a detective who remembers everything, which makes her one cop you won't forget. Don't miss TV's number one new drama, Unforgettable. All new episode Tuesday, only CBS. Auburn, 11 plays, 75 yards, just over three minutes. Michael Dyer punching it in from a yard out. But then Cody Parkey's point after hitting the upright, and so Auburn's lead remains three. Bruce Ellington, Stephon Gilmore back deep to return the kick. Cody Parkey waiting for the signal from the official. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston, our entire CBS crew from Columbia. Auburn, the defending national champions, three and one. Now their long 17-game winning streak snapped a couple of weeks back. Looking for a huge SEC road win here today. Steve Spurrier's Gamecocks meet time, 4-0. Trying to continue their winning ways as Parkey's kick into the end zone for the touchback. Let's check in for the first time today with Otis Livingston. Hey, Spiro, a great recruiting story involving Marcus Lattimore running back for South Carolina. The final two teams, as far as his college decision, was Auburn and South Carolina. His little cousin told him, just have a little fun. Let's put the South Carolina hat inside the Auburn hat. And when former Auburn great Stephen Davis gave him the hat, he pretended as though he was going to go to Auburn, but he was really choosing South Carolina. So Auburn fans, you can blame little, little cousin Mike for that little bit of okie doke. <laughs> Mike Butler, his cousin, who was just 14 years old at the time, showing some nerve, giving his cousin some advice. A decision that no doubt affected both of these programs. As here is Lattimore on first down. Uh, you talk about a tease. But I'll tell you what, right there on that run, that, that, that was not anything that fooled the Auburn defense up front. They've been gashed 
against the run this year, giving up almost 230 yards a game running the football. Right there, though, very stout. Good in the backfield, causing problems for Lattimore. Slow start for Lattimore today. This is second and 11. Garcia goes play action. Sacked. Blindside. Ladarius Owens, the red shirt freshman, got there for the Tigers. Well, I want you to watch number 76, Mike Matulis, right there. He's the one, the rook, the, the true freshman. Watch him, he just can't quite stay with the speed on the outside. And boy, I'll tell you, that's the big concern. Anytime you start a freshman on your left tackle, the quarterback's blind side, that is a tough spot to be. I would expect to see Steve Spurrier do some things to kind of protect the two of us on the outside until he gets some confidence up. Maybe put a tight end over there or have a running back chipping on the outside to slow down any rusher from the edge. They lose six. Now it's third and 17. Garcia. Little toss across his body. Incomplete. Had Lattimore wide open on the sideline. And South Carolina will punt. Well, you know, Steve Spurrier says one of the things that <laughs> is really, in his world, one of the things that's the most unsettling is when Steven Garcia gets on the outside. I want you to watch as Garcia rolls left down the sideline, Lattimore is going to be sitting wide open behind everybody, and Garcia does a great job buying time. Look at how wide open Lattimore is down the sideline. Now that, it doesn't get much easier than that. He's got to make that throw. That's a big play that's got to be converted. Snap is botched on the punt. Well, we have seen some ugly special teams play today. A couple of missed extra points uh, as a penalty marker is thrown. Fortunately, before the snap, exactly right, Spiro. Dan Matt Moore, our referee here today. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. Now, Steve, we touched on you know, Steve Spurrier may not have the most confidence in Steven Garcia. Wonder how long the leash is after a four-interception game last week against Vanderbilt and a guy behind him who Please Spurrier likes. Game clock to 12.55. Well, that's a good question. I, I truly believe if, if Steven Garcia does really start hurting this football team Steve Spurrier will not be too patient with him I, he got that sense just talking to him this week that he's been through so much with Steven Garcia 33 starts 20 wins but you can only take so much this is Joey Scribner Howard on the punt Juan Bray fielding on a bounce inside Gamecocks territory down to the 36 a 40-yard punt and a return of 12. Some pushing and shoving on the near side, the South Carolina sideline. As a penalty marker flies, the officials quickly trying to separate the players. Now, that was not a very good decision by the two players from Auburn, Jonathan Mincy and Enrique Florence. The two of them outside trying to hold up the gunner. And you can see right there, Coach is not very happy on the sideline. You're going to see at the bottom of your screen, the left-hand side, the play is well over. And it, After the play, personal foul. Number 14 of the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. And Steve, both Mincy and Florence, freshmen, no doubt getting an earful from Gene Chizik on that sideline. Yeah, he's, he's saying to him, you know what? We are better than that. We've won national championships around here. You don't win championships playing like that. That play was 10 seconds over. And you got Florence and Mincy just trying to make a statement. Now, you like the passion and the aggressiveness, but that's a little too much. Well, the Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. CC goes prime time later tonight in Gainesville, a heavyweight fight between third-ranked Alabama and the 12th-ranked Gators. What a matchup that's going to be. Tell you, our, our buddies Vernon and Gary have a good one, as always. 
Be a lot of fun to see who comes out on top of that. What's your pick? We're going Florida at home. You're going Florida at home. That's a pretty, pretty good pick. Although it's always hard to go against Nick Saban. I don't care where you're playing. His team's going to be ready to go. In the meantime here, Barrett Trotter and the Auburn offense, first and 10, just shy of the 50. Trotter goes draw play. This is Ontario McCaleb to the outside. Minimal yardage on first down, picks up two as he's forced out of bounds by Stephon Gilmore. And you may wonder why Gene Chizik was so upset. That ball was returned to the 36-yard line, now spotted on the other side of the 50 before this drive. If you don't get a first down here, you don't, you're not in field goal range, whereas at the 36, it was already almost there. This is second and eight. Try to play action. Trying to tuck it away. The speed of that South Carolina defense tracking him down. It was Melvin Ingram as a late marker is thrown at the 42. Uh, I don't know. I think the referee is going to say he didn't throw it toward the line of scrimmage. That's where it's got to be an effort to make the ball go toward the line of scrimmage. No doubt Barrett Trotter was outside of the pocket and can throw it away to avoid the hit. But it's got to go toward the line of scrimmage. Intentional grounding. Number 14 of the offense. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. The ball will be returned to the spot of the foul. Lost it down. Third down. And he said it didn't cross the line of scrimmage. I think most referees, depending on the circumstance, as long as the ball is going toward the line of scrimmage, you're attempting to throw the ball down the field, they're not going to call that, they're not going to throw that flag. But Barrett Trotter was trying to hit Steve Spurrier on the sideline right there. And that's a, that is a loss of down penalty as well. Third and seven. 17. 17 yards. They need to get to the Gamecocks 41. The officials still having a conversation here at near side at the 50. And now Barrett Trotter's got to be very careful here. He, Gene Chizik and the Auburn Tigers had great field position before the penalty, and now they're moving backwards. You do not want to throw the football over the middle. I think in this situation, third and long, you just want to try and get that field position back. It's very difficult to pick up a third and long in this kind of a situation. I'm thinking something like a screen pass or a draw play, some kind of safe way to get the ball to one of your playmakers on the move. Not sure what the delay is about here. It has been a slow moving first half, multiple penalties on both sides. We've seen missed extra points, a 50 yard touchdown pass play. And right now, Auburn in front, 9 6. And I don't think these 80,000 fans appreciate this delay either. Steve, any idea? I have no idea. No, I, I, I don't know whether it's a clock situation or. We're not being uh, given that privilege of information at this point. Whatever it was, it looked. Here we go. There was no foul on the play. The brawl crossed the line past the extended sideline. Third down. Well, okay, go away. I, I, I don't think that that's. We got to go back and look at that. I don't think that that ball crossed the line of scrimmage. I don't think it was close to crossing the line of scrimmage. So after all that, they'll spot the football inside Gamecocks territory at the 48 and call it third and seven. Much more manageable situation than a third and 17. Trotter flushed out. He eludes one tackler and he's finally tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by the linebackers, Jack Wilson. Well, 
And one of the things that's unique about this South Carolina defense, you see Jadevi and Clown and Clowney coming off the edge on the right side, but they can generate a lot of pressure without bringing extra guys. They've got such a strong front four. You go across there with Melvin Ingram, Devin Taylor, Jadevi and Clowney. I mean, it goes on and on. They've got some depth on that front four that can put pressure without any help. We haven't had a chance to talk about Clowney much, the true freshman who in terms of just being a physical specimen is up there with any defender in the country as the punt takes an Auburn bounce inside the five a 47 yard kick as Garcia takes over next. I'm the only player of 267 men that's walked through this this building to my left that can honestly say this. I'm the only pro football player that's in the Hall of Fame, and I'm the second best player in my own family. You know, the hairs in the back of your neck still stand up when you see the replays of Shannon Sharp's Hall of Fame induction speech. There's his brother, Sterling Sharp, South Carolina star here, and what numbers did he put up? Here in Columbia, nearly 25 yards, uh, 2,500 yards receiving, and Stevie can make a pretty strong argument that he should be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I think he can make a very strong argument. I have no doubt in my mind that if his career wasn't sh cut short due to the neck injury, he would be in the Hall of Fame. But there are a lot of players in the Hall of Fame that did not have as much an impact on the game and the position as Sterling Sharp, for sure. He can make a very strong case that he belongs and deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. And Sterling still makes his home here, very close to Columbia. No doubt watching his Gamecocks today, now trailing Auburn 9 6 with 11 21 left before halftime. Steven Garcia and the South Carolina offense still struggling. Already a turnover, they go draw play, fake draw. This is Garcia dancing to the outside, out past the 20. And finally brought down at the 26. He faked everyone out. He sure did. Good hard fake inside. You know, when you've got Marcus Lattimore in the backfield, he's going to draw a lot of attention. That whole white defense out there, that whole Auburn Tiger defense went flying for Lattimore, number 21. That's what they've been dreaming about all week. And then Garcia, nice job taking it down around the edge. Big pickup. 21 yards gives him a first and 10 from the 26. Here's Jeffrey. Slanting over the middle and Jeffrey game tackled at the 33 after he picked up eight. Now we talked to Steve Spurrier, Steve on Thursday, and no doubt has all the respect in the world for Marcus Lattimore as we see Jeffrey limping. But what makes Spurrier tick is putting together a lethal passing attack, and that's something he hasn't been able to do so far with this current offense. No, he has not been able to do that. It's been very frustrating to him, I think, over the, the past several years. You've got an experienced quarterback. You've got good talent. You look at the receivers that have come through this program. Sidney Reiser goes on and on. Garcia slings it, and he's picked off at the 50. And that, that's the kind of play that we're talking about. Demetrius McNeil with the interception. It's Garcia's fifth pick in the last six and a half You're quarters. You're going to see Demir Bird right here going down the middle of the field. He's the one that Garcia was going to right over the top, and he, he is open. That ball was thrown a little bit high. Now, you have to, I, I'm not going to put all the blame on this one on Steven Garcia because Demir Bird is actually, he was the one underneath. That's my fault. Excuse me. I don't want to put the blame on Demir Bird. That was Ace Sanders over the middle, and he was not looking for that football. I don't know whether it was the right read or not, but it was a bad result. Here's Dyer on first and 10 inside Gamecocks territory, an eight-yard pickup. And you wonder what's going through the mind now of Steve Spurrier. Again, Connor Shaw, the number two quarterback for South Carolina. Well, it just looked to me like A. Sanders was not ready for that football. He wasn't looking for it. The ball was past him by the time he turned his head. This is second and two. Dyer inside the 40. As the Auburn first down picks up four yards. As we approach the nine-minute mark here in the second. 
Well, this is the kind of situation Auburn, Auburn has to start capitalizing on this good field position if they want to have a chance to win this ball game. Here is McCaleb as the freshman backup quarterback Kyle Frazier comes back onto the field to pick up of two. Well, South Carolina defense has been pretty stout today. We saw the interception with the trick play earlier, but the pressure on Barrett Trotter, keeping him short of the first down marker right there. This is a very athletic, very aggressive defense. Steve Spurrier even said that they have not really put it all together all year. Last week, their best performance against Vanderbilt. Trotter out of the shotgun on second and eight. Pocket collapses and they get to him. It's Ingram with the sack. Now watch Ingram one more time. Here he is right here. You're going to see him coming up uh, actually on the outside. Good job of pressing. They move him around, play him in different positions. He just basically carried the left tackle back into the quarterback. A.J. Green. The sack by Ingram. Makes it third and 15 here. Trotter from the shotgun from the 43. Here they come. With a bubble screen to the sideline. It's Blake on the reception. Well short of the first down as Auburn will punt. Let's go to New York. Get an update with Tim Brando. All right, Spiro. Steve Berline, I want you to comment on Robert Griffin III. Watch this. Throwing to the back shoulder to Tevin Reese's third touchdown pass of the day. Listen to this gaudy stat, Steve. He has 16 touchdown passes on the year, only 14 incompletions. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that, that is unheard of. 16 touchdowns, only 14 incompletions. <laughs> That's a pretty good ratio. Hey, Sanders signaling for the fair catch, and what a job by the Auburn punt team. They pin it inside the five after a 40-yard punt by Clark. And the South Carolina offense pinned deep inside their own territory when we come back. Nine six, you score here in South Carolina. Seven nineteen to play. The defending national champion Tigers in front, and an excellent job by their punt coverage team right here. Yeah, Nico Thorpe, number fifteen, is one. But look what happens. He steps into the end zone. He's definitely on the line. Which, if he touches the football now without coming back into the field and reestablishing himself, it is a penalty. But right there, you saw both feet came back into the field of play. That is why there was no flag. Boy, that's great presence by Nico Thorpe. And a big time play to back up. That last drive started at the five yard line for South Carolina. I think Steve Spurrier is getting kind of tired of seeing his team backed up in their own end zone. That is not a comforting thought. Not an easy place to call plays from. So Steve Spurrier staying with his 50 year quarterback, Steven Garcia. Through his eighth interception earlier in the quarter. And now is pinned back as far as they can go inside the one. Here's Lattimore trying to find some breathing room, punches it up the middle and picks up seven yards. You want to see what makes a running back great. Watch what this guy does. Now remember, he's only a sophomore, five games into a sophomore. But watch him take this ball hard to the left, and then he cuts back, and he's got the presence. The shoulder stays square up the field. He does not dance around. He understands the situation. He makes a cut, and then he goes. Big, big yardage right there coming out of his own end zone. Now, Lattimore has been held in check today. Entered the day second per game in rush yards at over 152 a week. So far, just 16 carries on the afternoon. This is second and three draw play. Garcia to Lattimore, a second burst, takes him to the 17, and a first down for South Carolina. Well, again, talking about Steve Spurrier, he told us, he said, you know, when, when your quarterback's running around doing things you're not sure what he's doing or throwing interceptions, turn the ball over, it makes it very hard to call plays. Expect to see number 21 get in the football if we start showing a little bit of... Uh, inconsistency in our passing game. Marcus Lattimore is his security blanket. There's no doubt about it. And I rightfully so. And Steve, you talked to these coaches here in Columbia. 
They said Lattimore has been such a breath of fresh air. Always a team first guy and so far is off to an incredible start to his career. Timeout. Our score here in the second quarter, Columbia, South Carolina. Auburn leads South Carolina 9-6. to six. And we're going to talk a little bit about Auburn wide receiver Emery Blake, who has football in his blood. His grandfather played in the Canadian Football League. His father, a 14-year veteran of the NFL, Jeff Blake, most notably with the Cincinnati Bengals. Emery said he didn't want to follow in his father's footsteps, although he was raised around the game, the NFL game, meeting many quarterbacks. His father never forced him to do that. Instead, teaching him how to run routes, read secondaries, and present and coming off the field. Uh, he also said that being around football players in the NFL taught his son how to become a football player, to also get to a school like Auburn and to become a professional himself. So far, so good. Sparrow, back to you. I'll tell you what, Otis. His dad threw as pretty a deep ball as any quarterback I've ever seen. He could put that ball out there, and, and amazing how often he completed it. He got, I'm sure Emory caught a lot of deep ones growing up. And Blake now watching his defense on the field first and ten Steven Garcia working from the shotgun formation Garcia throws it middle well short of his intended receiver it's Nick Jones and you just wonder you know, where his head is right now we touched on some of the personal issues that he's had to deal with this season his grandfather Steve passing away in Tampa earlier this week so he's you know, very emotional without a doubt and right now just Hasn't had it. Now he had the one big play to start the game out to Alshon Jeffrey, but he hasn't really had much rhythm since. And right there, I think he got stepped on or hit low. Something's going on because he got up limping a little bit. That ball came out of his hand funny. This is second and ten. Delayed handoff. Marcus Lattimore, the sophomore, approaching the 20, need to get to about the 27. We'll see if anything did happen. You can see he was in pain after the play for sure. I don't know where the ball was tipped. No, not tipped. Nothing. I don't see anything there. Yeah, it looks like maybe he might have got his hand clipped or something. Maybe a helmet or I don't know, but it, it was not a good throw. Looks like some movement pre-snap. Rotevius Watkins, the senior tackle. Full start. Number 73 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, Andy Rooney has become an American icon, and he's about to make his last regular appearance on 60 Minutes. You won't want to miss it tomorrow only on CBS. South Carolina Steve has been consistently pushed back deep inside their own territory had a short field to work with on that touchdown drive earlier and right now faced with a third and 13 from their own 14 yard line Garcia nowhere to throw will try to run for it out past the 20 and brought down at the 24 by a host of Auburn defenders after he picks up 10 yards. Well, that I did not expect to see Steve Spurrier letting Jeff or Stephen Garcia, excuse me, uh, throw that ball out of his own end zone. He has not earned that confidence by his play this year. A nice safe call quarterback draw. He almost found a way to pop it enough to get that first down, but when you've been through what, what Steve Spurrier and this offense have been through, they just don't have the confidence to try and put that ball up the field from their own end zone. Well, Steve Spurrier called his offensive performance last weekend against Vanderbilt in a win, mind you, putrid. And so far, despite that long touchdown pass between Garcia and Jeffrey, they have been equally poor against Auburn. Thursday on CBS, what if you could stop a crime before it happens? Now you can. From executive producer J.J. Abrams and Jonathan Nolan, Person of Interest, new episode Thursday, only on CBS. Spiro, the one thing I will say about Steven Garcia, though, is he is a warrior. He comes back when you think you've counted him out. He finds a way to come back. You look at the quarterback comparison. Well, he's a fighter, no doubt about it. Fifth year senior here in Columbia. He was Trotter on first down. Actually, Kyle Frazier, the freshman quarterback, picking up six. 
And we've seen Frazier more today than we've seen him in any game, Steve, so far this season. And boy, what a change of pace he's given this Auburn offense. That's exactly right. And we, we talked to Gene Chizik, and he did have a lot of good things to say about Kyle Frazier. He really has been impressed with how this kid has picked it up. I think he has a lot of uh, similarities to, to Cam Newton in the way he can run that football. It was McCaleb trying to dance to the outside, approaches the 50. And picks up eight more yards. <laughs> that quick huddle by Auburn, it gets me every time. You know, they're in a huddle, and all of a sudden, boom, they turn around. That ball is snapped, and they're moving. They've got to be awake. Trotter back onto the field. Draw play handoff to Michael Dyer. Inside South Carolina territory, you pick up a five yards to set up a second and five. A conditioning. Certainly so important for an offense that plays as quickly as Auburn does. Here's Trotter on second and five. Dyer up the gut, breaking tackles down to the 30, and finally dragged down at the 28. 17 yards on the run by Dyer. Well, this is right up the gut. No trickery here. You see Auburn is already lined up to run the next play, but look at that hole at the seam. Right up the pipe of the South Carolina defense. This is first and 10. Dyer now the workhorse. Inside the 25, picks up three down to the 24. Coming up, the Geico halftime report from New York. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman get you caught up on today's scores and highlights, plus a preview of third ranked Alabama at 12th ranked Florida. It's all coming up on the Geico halftime report. And we will get a timeout here in Columbia. Steve Spurrier trying to get his defense back on track. Stay with us. And now Red Lobster presents today's Scholar Athlete. Barrett Trotter showing his versatility as a student athlete at Auburn, already a graduate. Now taking classes to pursue his master's degree in public administration. And uh, that's a pretty good GPA. Certainly better than what mine was. <laughs> I know it was better than yours. What are you, what are you talking about here? <laughs> Come on now. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to the Auburn General Scholarship Fund. This is second and seven. Trotter to give to Dyer inside the 25 as he picks up maybe a yard to the 24. This tempo that Auburn is running at right now, though, Spur, there's no way you can simulate that speed in practice as we see right there Michael Dyer getting up hobbling a little bit but there is absolutely no way that South Carolina can simulate this tempo in practice. Auburn has run the ball every single play on this drive right at him. Critical third and six from the 24. Trotter runs it himself, has the first down inside the 15-yard line, and a first down for the Tigers. Oh, what a great call. That play was called from the sideline. That the, the, the offensive staff saw the defense South Carolina was in, and they called the right number. Trotter picks up 10 yards here, gives to Dyer. Dyer picks up a yard. Clock continues to run, a minute 47 to play before halftime as Auburn tries to build on a three-point lead. You know what it is, Spiro? The, the Auburn coaches saw that South Carolina was in man-to-man -man defense. Who's the one guy in the field that's not covered in man-to-man -man defense? The quarterback. On the quarterback draw, they run everybody to the outside, the middle parts wide open, and Barrett Trotter took it for a nice game. Well, South Carolina's defense gassed right now, forced to burn a timeout earlier. Here they bury Dyer in the backfield. Dyer loses a yard at the 15-yard line. And now it looks like Gene Chizik will burn a timeout. Timeout. So a minute 16 left before halftime. Auburn knocking on the doorstep. Well, you see the four previous BCS national champions as Auburn tries to defend its title this season. You see what they did the following year. Never easy to defend Steve Berline in college football, but a good start today for the Tigers up 9-6. Yes, it is. 
Good start for the Tigers. And the one thing all, those teams all have in common, SEC as well. The last four, five, counting Auburn national champions. A lot of people don't put Auburn in that same category with what they've been through this year, but still a lot of football left. This is third and ten. Trotter. End zone incomplete. Trying to find the H back Lutzen Kirken. And Chiswick will send out his field goal unit. The one thing you don't want to do in that situation is, is force the football. I think Barrett Trotter was trying to make something out of nothing right there. He had Michael Dyer checking through late on that play and I think the play was designed to either go up the field or come down to Michael Dyer for a nice safe gain and Michael Dyer could have run forever. They go fake field goal. They throw in zone. It's intercepted. Picked off inside the five and guess who it's Melvin Ingram. Ryan White was the thrower and Ingram with another interception for South Carolina. Well, Lorenzo Ward, the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, told us that he believes Melvin Ingram is the best athlete on this football team. Look at it. This guy is six foot two, 276 pounds. He played tailback in high school, among other positions, but the guy is truly amazing. He, there's nobody, I don't think, in college football that can do what this guy can do. Gene Chizik, he says, okay, they got us. You know, he was trying to catch him off guard, no doubt about it. Well, there have been whispers about the Heisman for Ingram. That's how good he's been. And South Carolina's offense onto the field. We move inside of a minute. Lattimore picks up five yards. I think you can make a case for this guy to be thrown in the Heisman discussion. Last week alone, he had three tackles for loss, two sacks. He's got two sacks today. He scored three touchdowns already this year. He's got two interceptions. This is a defensive lineman. Three touchdowns, two interceptions. Auburn defenders trying to score in here as we reach the 32nd mark. And a late marker thrown. And you can sense a little uneasiness by the faithful here. South Carolina. Not a real good feel for how things are going right now. It has not been a very consistent, smooth first half on either side of the ball for South Carolina. And Steve, these officials have had a long day as well. Yeah, a lot Multiple of delays. There's Matt Moore, a referee. Full start, number 73 on the offense. By rule, the penalty includes a 10-second runoff of the game clock. Please reset the game clock to 19 seconds. Second penalty on Watkins today. So they'll run the clock down to 19 seconds. And Spurrier may just wave the white flag here. Down three points. And keep it on the ground. That's Marcus Lattimore picking up a couple of yards, and that'll do it. As this first half comes to a close, back and forth, a couple of missed extra points, one for either team. Steven Garcia, the 50-yard touchdown toss to Alshon Jeffrey, but the young Auburn Tigers, the defending national champions on the road in SEC play for the first time this season with a three-point lead at halftime. Let's go down to the field. Jonas Livingston. Coach, you lead 9-6, to six, but there's been a number of missed opportunities, including right there on that fake field goal with the interception. Yeah, there has been. we got to play better. Defensively, we're playing well right now. We're being able to really put the clamps down on 21 right now for the most part. Uh, we just got to play better right now. It's a little sloppy in parts. Offensively, we're not being very opportunistic. Again, we just got to keep hammering out and something good will happen. All right, thanks a lot. Best of luck in the second half. Sparrow, back to you. Otis, thanks. That's the end of the first half with our score, Auburn 9, South Carolina 6. Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman will be along with the Geico Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station.
the points have been at a premium here as we have reached the end of halftime. 9-6, the Auburn Tigers in front. Spiro Didis and Steve Berline, neither offense could get much going, and patience growing thin now, Steve, with Steven Garcia. Yeah, you can almost sense it in this stadium right now. A lot of people very frustrated with how Steven Garcia has played to this point. Frustrated with his career, really, to this point. The up and down factor right there to start out the game. You think he's going to get it going with the big touchdown pass to Alshon Jeffrey, but then it got worse. A couple of sacks and then the miscommunication with, for the interception right there. It just kind of gives Auburn the momentum and the belief that they can be here. They can be in this ball game. You know, some of the storylines, you see what Michael Dyer has done. 21 rushes for 69 yards and a touchdown. And Marcus Lattimore, the average per rush good, but he's been held in check so far. Let's go down to the field and Otis Livingston. Spiro, I just spoke with Coach Spurrier coming out of the tunnel, and he said that despite not having a whole lot of success offensively, he has no thoughts of replacing Steven Garcia in the second half at this time. He also said that the defense is having a little bit of trouble with Auburn's hurry-up offense, but he was encouraged by the fact that they've only given up nine points in the first half. Otis Stang, so there you have it. No thoughts at least that he will share with us about a potential change at the quarterback position. Yeah, coaches are pretty good about keeping their hands to themselves as far as not showing their hands. So uh, I don't know. I, I would think that there's got to be a little bit of that thought in his mind. One of the things that's amazing to me about this game, Spiro, you look at three games that Auburn has played this year. You look at the game against Utah State, Mississippi State, and Clemson. All three of those games, the opposing team had over 80 plays during the course of that game offensively. Today, South Carolina only has had 25 plays in the first half. In a role reversal, Auburn, the most plays they've had during a regular game this year, during a game is 62. They've had 44 plays in the first half, so completely flipping it from what it normally has been for them. Jay Wooten on to boot it away to start the second half in a frenzied atmosphere here at williams Bryce Stadium in South Carolina. It's the SEC on CBS 9-6 Auburn as we begin the third quarter. This is Trey Mason. Their backup running back on the return out past the 25 and brought down at the 26. 18 yards on the return. There is Barrett Trotter, a redshirt junior quarterback. Trying to fill those big, big shoes left behind by Cam Newton. And while they've only scored nine points, Trotter Steve has had the offense moving nicely. And now Trotter will stay on the sideline. And the freshman Kyle Frazier, who's given this team some juice, will line up in the shotgun. Yeah, Barrett Trotter only has thrown eight passes today, four of eight in the first half. They've been doing it by going right at this South Carolina defense. And they've been doing it very well. Over 100 yards, 117 yards to be exact for Auburn on the ground so far. Frazier fakes the give and lunges forward out past the 30 and picks up three yards. You see what the Auburn offense did in that first half, the field goal early. And Steve, they've had very good field position. That's been the theme for them so far. They really have. And you think about how many times in the first half South Carolina started back inside their own 10 yard line. We got Barrett Trotter back in there, quarterback right now. Draw play to Dyer. Has the first down out past the 40 and finally brought down after a pickup of 13 yards. Well, this guy has been doing it today. He's Mr. Inside all the way. Look at all of his runs. You'll never, or I should say, you'll seldom see him take it outside the tackle box. He knows how to take it between the tackles and get what's there. And today, third in SEC rushing. Here's Dyer again, picks up a couple on first down. We're just under a minute gone by in this third quarter, and Auburn up 9-6. You know what's impressive to me, Spiro? This is a very talented front seven by South Carolina, and they're going straight ahead between the tackles, and South Carolina has had no answer for it. This is second and eight. Trotter tracked down by Ingram, tripped up as he threw. And what else can Melvin Ingram do today for this team? They're all-world defensive end. An interception in the first half. Two sacks. Did you see him close the ground there on that? I mean, Barrett Trotter, I think, thought he had plenty of time, and he blinked, and Ingram was on top of him. Okay. 
That's a pivotal play early in the second half. Third and eight for Auburn from their own 45. And Gene Chizik will burn a timeout. Timeout. Well, back in Columbia, South Carolina, the only shining star today for the South Carolina Gamecocks has been Melvin Ingram. He's got two sacks today and then 20 yards up the field with the interception on the fake field goal. This is a guy that can take over a game by himself. Obviously showing that he can run up and down the football field, play the run, play the pass. He's the real deal. We spoke with South Carolina defensive coordinator Lorenzo Ward on Thursday. Talked about what an uphill climb it's been for Ingram. Started here as a linebacker, then was redshirted with a knee injury. He's had an awfully tough time learning that defensive end position. They said the hardest thing to convince him to do was to put his hand on the ground. But boy, has he learned well as he has blossomed into one of the premier defensive players in the country. This is third and eight. Trotter finds McCaleb near side. First down Auburn inside the 40. A pickup of 13 yards. I'll tell you what, this is actually a great throw by Barrett Trotter. And you'll see what I mean here when you look at this angle. You see Jadavian Clowney right there. And then over the top, he had to throw it over the top of not only Jadavian Clowney, but one other defender in the flat and, and put it on the money for a big game. First down, they keep it on the ground. Michael Dyer picks up a couple. Dyer today just under 80 yards on 19 carries. And the touchdown sets up a second and eight. Trotter fakes the end around and is buried by Ingram at the 46. I tell you, you get the sense that this guy just is getting better and better as you go. You're going to see right here from the inside, he's going to come up there and make the sack in the backfield. Not, not Nothing fancy, and I don't know how you can leave, of all people on the field, you leave Melvin Ingram unblocked. He's going to take that every time. There was good coverage up the field. Trotter didn't have a chance. Trotter changes the play. This is third and 15 from the 45. Trotter giving to McCaleb, darting inside the 35 down to the 33. Picked up 10. They need to get to the 30 to move the chains. And I think this is just outside field goal range for Cody Parkey. His long is only a 43 yarder. This right now, if they try to kick it, it's going to be a 52 yarder. Yeah, I would expect to see a punt here out of Gene Chiswick. This is, though, Spiro, this is a place, and we've seen a fake field goal attempt already. This is a place where it wouldn't be surprising to see a fake punt. Stephen Clark, the sophomore punter, Kansas City native. From his own 45 inside South Carolina territory right there. Sanders with the fair catch at the 12. Now can Steven Garcia get this offense off the ground down three here at home? Timeout. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by New York Life Insurance Company. Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Russell Athletic. And by Napa. Time now for our AFLAC trivia question. Last year, Cam Newton became the third Auburn Tiger to win the Heisman Trophy. Who was Auburn's first Heisman winner? Our score here in Columbia, South Carolina. Auburn 9, South Carolina 6. As Steve Berline ponders that trivia question, 11-26 to play early in this third quarter. You see some of the notables and what they have done today. Steven Garcia is still struggling. 
But uh, Michael Dyer now, Steve, approaching the century mark. Also a touchdown. That's the key right there, though. Holding Marcus Lattimore to 36 yards in the first half. I'll tell you, Auburn has his number, though. You look at what he did last year. He only averaged in the two games they played last year, 59 yards a game, a 3.9 average. So Auburn knows something about shutting down Marcus Lattimore. It's not like they haven't done this before. Only Oregon's LaMichael James averages more rushing yards per game than Lattimore. And better than 152 per game. But today, hasn't had much going. Garcia throws near side, it's caught. On the sideline at about the 23-yard line, that's Bruce Ellington, the redshirt freshman. Picks up 13 yards and a first down for the Gamecocks. And that's big for Steven Garcia. That, coming out of his own end zone again, like they spent most of the first half backed up. But to come out and hit his first pass like that, a nice pickup, that's really important to get him some confidence going here. Garcia from the shotgun. This is first and 10 from the 25. Lattimore, draw play, lunges forward, lost the football. It looked as though it came after he hit the turf. No signal from the referee. And it will be South Carolina football. And second down. And Gene Chizik was lobbying hard for the fumble here, but I think it was pretty clear that Marcus Lattimore was on the ground before that ball came out. Yeah, no doubt about it. This is second and four. Lattimore out past the 30 as we go to New York and Tim Brando for a Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Spiro, Steve, no better defensive player worthy of Heisman consideration than Tyran Matthew. Today, he set an LSU record for career force fumbles with two strips, one of which led to this 23-yard scoop in the third that helped LSU beat Kentucky and stay undefeated. Our late game tonight, you will see Trent Richardson of the Crimson Tide visit the Swamp on CBS, and Andrew Luck, meantime, at Stanford will be on hand to take on UCLA. Tim, thanks. Uh, South Carolina running a quick play here. We're under 10 minutes left in the third. And Steve, you can hear the boos here from the home fans, better than 80,000. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what South Carolina was trying to accomplish there. It was third and a long three, almost four yards, and tried to catch Auburn off guard with a quick snap. That did not work, obviously. We're now we're, we're in a punt situation again for South Carolina. Scribner Howard on to punt. On the 23, a booming kick. Juan Bray backpedaling. Fields at his own eight. Bray looting tacklers ran into his own man. Still going. And finally dragged down at the 25 yard line. 58 yard punt and a 15 yard return by Quan Bray. Now it's a low-scoring SEC showdown here in Columbia. Three-point Auburn lead. See, most times your defense has to show up, and for Auburn, it has shown up all day. The early fumble by Marcus Lattimore set up a score for Auburn, and then the sacks, the hits on Stephen Garcia right there. The last one, Ladarius Owens with the sack. It has been a long day for the offense of South Carolina, and you can see the ranks. How it's been for the Auburn Tigers all year. They are last in the SEC in all of those categories. It doesn't get any worse, but boy, today they're acting like they're a new football team out there, and it's been very impressive to watch. They have feasted on a Gamecocks offense that has been shaky themselves. Auburn's defense limiting South Carolina to 172 yards of total offense. Auburn has it here, first and 10 from their own 25. Try to play action. Rolling out. Completes to the sideline. That's Quindarius Carr, the senior from Huntsville, Alabama. Well, this is the way it's been going for, for Auburn at this point today. Boy, nice catch getting down. Definitely had his hands underneath the football, no doubt. Way to pull it in. They pick up seven, second and three from the 32. This is Dyer. Dyer gang tackled. Picks up maybe a yard, and now Dyer looks like he's hurt. You know, when the bodies are falling on top of you and you're holding that football tight into your gut, a lot of times 
You end up landing on that football. Let's see if we can see what happened here. But it looks to me like yeah, room right on top of that football. And that's that is a lot of weight on top of him. No doubt. That football got a little bit compressed on the bottom of that pile. I can tell you that much. Kelsey quarrels among the tacklers. The freshman at 275 pounds. Yeah, he was one of about three or four guys on on top of Michael Dyer. Well, we mentioned Dyer's incredible freshman season a year ago, breaking Bo Jackson's freshman record at Auburn. Finished with nearly 1,100 rush yards, and now they look at the right ankle of Dyer. Mm. And what a loss he would be. Auburn in a tight game. Their offense still on the field here, up three with 8.31 left in this third quarter. No well, good news for Auburn. Michael Dyler able to walk off the field on his own accord. But in some considerable pain as they look at that right ankle on the sideline. Let's take a look at our answer to our Aflac trivia question. Last year we mentioned Cam Newton became the third Auburn Tiger to win the Heisman. Who was Auburn's first Heisman winner? Pat Sullivan back in 1971. Sullivan leading the Auburn Tigers to a 9 and 2 record, 20 touchdowns and better than 2,000 yards passing back in 1971. And of course, Bo Jackson, one time teammate of Steve Berline, won it in 1985, 1,700 yards on the ground. And Cam Newton who had one of the greatest single seasons ever in college football last season. And Cam Newton showing this year that. There's no doubt he can play at the next level too with his start for the Carolina Panthers. A true freshman Kyle Frazier out of the shotgun. Up the gut needed to get to the 35. He's got it as he picks up three yards and an Auburn first down. So now a bit of an adjustment as they continue to look at Michael Dyer on the sideline Ontario McCaleb who's their one two punch. Will line up behind Trotter on first and 10 from the 36. Trotter goes play action, finds Blake, but he loses yardage. A couple of yards as the Gamecocks hold defensively. Now there was no fooling right there. South Carolina was all over that play with Quinn Smith making the initial tackle to Davian Clowney and company coming in to support. Devin Taylor, the all SEC defensive end, also there. This is Trotter, far side incomplete, intended for Emory Blake. Total yards in this game. South Carolina just at 172. As now the Tigers facing a third and 12. Trotter finding the Caleb out of the backfield, but he's dumped down at the 30. Antonio Allen with a tackle for a loss. I'll tell you what, this is two great plays by the South Carolina defense stepping up. You're going to see over here the, the screen pass to the left side out to Ontario McCaleb, and Antonio Allen just read it too quickly to get even give Auburn an opportunity to block, and he comes up there and makes a nice open field tackle. Two good solid reactions to screen in a row for this South Carolina defense. Lorenzo Ward said that Allen just simply has a nose for the football, and that's been true today. Contact with the football, and Auburn has recovered at the 42, but there is a marker down. Penalty thrown at the 34. Stephon Gilmore. The man back deep to return. Our referee here, Matt Moore. Kick catch interference. Number 31 of the kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Trent Fisher, the red shirt freshman, whistled for the penalty. Well, you can see the obvious fair catch right there. Yep, contact made. 
Trent Fisher can't do that. That about gave everybody in this stadium a heart attack because of the fact that they knew it was a live ball if there was not a penalty. So Steven Garcia back onto the field. Garcia today just six for ten for 94 yards. Did have a 50-yard touchdown to Jeffrey. And has also thrown his eighth pick of the season. Garcia has time. Finds his man inside the 25. It's Bruce Ellington still going. And finally pushed out of bounds at the 15-yard line. 35 yards, Garcia to Ellington. Well, when Coach Spurrier talked to us about the athletes on his team, Ellington's name came up. He's also the starting point guard on the basketball team as a true freshman last year. Pretty special athlete making a big play right there and give credit to Steven Garcia hitting him right on the numbers. And now let's take a look at the Verizon Red Zone. South Carolina desperately trying to get some offense going down three as we come up on six to play in the third. There's Lattimore. Outside, inside the five, touchdown South Carolina. Lattimore goes 15 yards and the Gamecocks retake the lead. And that was a statement drive by South Carolina right there. Two big plays right in a row saying we're going to take control of this game right now. And the point afters haven't been easy today. Jay Wooten is good. And South Carolina has a four point lead. Look at the play off the left side. No doubt about it. Marcus Lattimore was not going to be denied. Lattimore and company held in check for the most part, but he finds some open real estate. And the Gamecocks have a four-point lead here in Columbia. Timeout. South Carolina back in front of 13 to 9 here in Columbia with 558 left in the third. Monday, the only thing these two girls have in common is that they're broke. See why Two Broke Girls is TV's number one news show. Two Broke Girls, Monday after How I Met Your Mother, only on CBS. South Carolina into the red zone for the first time all day, and Marcus Lattimore able to punch it in from 15 yards out and this place is literally shaking right now with the Gamecocks up 13 to 9. And what do you do Spiro when you when you need someone to step up and make a play you go to your best playmaker Marcus Lattimore answering the bell with his 10th touchdown of the year doing what he's done for the whole time he's been here at South Carolina just saying put it on my shoulders I can take it. Jay Wooten on to boot it away. Auburn fielding with Quan Bray from his own five. Bray finds a seam out past the 30 and cut down from the back at the 36 yard line, a return of 29 yards. Now there's been two touchdowns today for South Carolina. First one to Alshon Jeffrey going up big time over the top, and then your other big time player, Marcus Lattimore. It's been a frustrating day for him, but I'll tell you. The special ones, and he is a special one, they know how to keep in it. They keep their head in it, they keep their heart in it, and they make it happen when they get the opportunity. So Jeffrey, the 50-yard touchdown reception early, and Lattimore's 15-yard scoring run. The difference right now with Auburn retaking possession down four points. Michael Dyer leaving the game earlier in the quarter with a right ankle sprain back, and here picks up five yards on first down. Auburn continuing to go with their hurry up offense. Gus Malzahn, their offensive coordinator, signaling the play call to Barrett Trotter from their own 40.
Trotter finds Bray. Now past the 45 and enough for the Auburn first out. Let's get an update on that injury to Dyer onto the field with Otis Livingston. Well, Spirit, uh, Michael Dyer is back in the ball game. They checked his ankle, rewrapped it. He was in an obvious pain, but jogged up and down the sideline trying to work it out, and he's back out on the field. Otis thanks Dyer now to 84 yards on the ground today. Kyle Frazier, the freshman, back under center. Nowhere to go on first down. Melvin Ingram with another defensive stop. Yeah, we haven't called his name at all today, have we? That guy is truly amazing. I, I really believe he could play probably four or five different positions on the football field. Now, there's been some talk about maybe Ingram getting some run as a tailback here. Fraser wrapped up eluding tacklers. Somehow able to squirm through the grasp initially. And he still loses about a half yard. And it'll be third and long for Auburn. Now you can see what a couple of big plays out of your offense does to the whole environment. A place like this here in Columbia, when they want to get it rocking, they get it rocking, and the defense feeds off of that. Trotter giving to McCaleb on third and 11. Maybe to get to the 39, he picks up nine there. Well, Gene Chizik has a decision to make here, Spiro. You got third and a long two, it looks like. You can make a case for going for the fake, but I think he's making the right call with three minutes and 40 seconds left in the third quarter. You don't want to panic. A lot of football left. Keep trying to pin South Carolina back in their own end. Play for field position. Again, this is fake territory, though. Stephen Clark, the sophomore putter, from his own 44. A. Sanders back deep. Signals fair catch. And that's where Stephen Garcia and company will have it from their own 12. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS rolls out doubleheader action. First, Big Ben and the Steelers take on Matt Schaub and the Texans. Then Kyle Orton leading the Broncos against Aaron Rodgers and the Super Bowl champion Packers. Check your local listings. It all begins with the NFL Today, presented by Southwest Airlines. So some of your storylines heading into the NFL. Arian Foster expected to start for Houston in a huge game early season against Pittsburgh and one of the big story has been Ryan Fitzpatrick an incredible start for Buffalo after knocking off New England last Sunday at home. Garcia keep it on the ground. Lattimore fumbles for the second time and it looks as though South Carolina recovers. Mm. Lattimore lost the fumble in the first half. Uh, South Carolina dodges a bullet right here. Uh, this is dangerous. Marcus Lattimore usually very reliable with the football. No doubt that ball popped out of there. And I, don't, I think it was Rokevius Watkins that fell on that football. So no gain on the play. It's second and ten from the 12. Garcia tucks it away. Out past the 20. Has the first down and more as he's tripped up at the 25. Now we've seen a little bit of versatility out of Stephen Garcia today. This is the second or third time we've seen him on a quarterback draw. And boy, he looks comfortable running with that football. Took a nice shot at the end of the play. That was Craig Sanders that came up and hit him late there to finish it off. But boy, the, the damage was already done from Stephen Garcia. 13 yards on the ground by Garcia. It's first and 10 from the 25. Auburn showing blitz. Garcia airing it out. It's intercepted. Terrible decision by Garcia. Nico Thorpe with the pick and has some room to maneuver. Gets to the 50 and Auburn will take over from there. All right, your, your team has just taken over the lead and gotten the momentum. You cannot do this, Steven Garcia. What are you thinking? It's a first down, play action pass. Your coach is showing confidence in you that you're going to make a good decision and not force the football, and you throw it up for grabs down the middle of the field. You can't do that. You're too experienced. 
And I don't care whether he gets his arm hit or not. It wasn't the right decision. He got his arm hit at the very end. That was a bad decision. The receiver was not open up the field. There's nothing else you can say about it. There's really no excuse. Second pick that Garcia's thrown today. His nine interceptions more than any quarterback in the country. This is Michael Dyer on that gimpy right ankle. Tracked down in the backfield as he loses three yards. It's about awareness, girl. You, you know, you've got to understand the situation. Your team is in a position to do something special. You win this ball game, you're sitting at 5 0 with a bunch of confidence. Plays like that lose ball games. Trotter from the shotgun on second and 13. Play action. Hit as he throws, it's incomplete. And Steve, you look at. You know, the other parts of the South Carolina team, all world players defensively, as we take a look at the replay. You've got Marcus Lattimore, Alshon Jeffrey, as Trotter takes a shot. Emory Blake, meantime, is the injured player on the field. So you stacked really in every department, but you've had very shaky quarterback play. And, and that's as we said in the outset, that he's the wild card. He truly is the wild card. And, and uh, we hope that. Emory Blake is okay. You see at the we'll see at the end of this play. He did take a good shot. What a great looking wide receiver this guy is. He scored touchdowns in seven straight games and just mm. was kind of exposed by the hat the high pass. He's grabbing his leg there. So as they look at Emory Blake, let's go back to the studio in New York and get a John Hancock update. All right, fellas, I've got this year's version of Cam Newton, okay? It's Robert Griffin III. Take a look at this. 35 yards to Kendall Wright. By the way, Wright has nine catches for 201 yards. He threw that off his back foot. <laughs> Five touchdown passes for Griffin. He has just five incompletions. That means his season total, Steve, 18 touchdowns, 17 incompletions. That's just ridiculous. Who is this guy, Timmy B? I, I mean, this, this guy, you talk about coming out of nowhere and just making it look easy. Meantime, Emory Blake, who has become such a lethal weapon for the Auburn offense, being looked at, and it's his right knee. As you pay attention here to the end of the play, Steve comes down awkwardly and it looked as though he got that right leg kind of tangled up underneath him. Yep, he, he, he got it twisted up. You can see the, the foot got twisted up, and I, I don't know whether we don't, we don't want to speculate, we don't know, but it looked like it was the lower, lower part of that right leg. Good to see him up walking off the field, though. Gene Chizik watched his star running back, Michael Dyer, limp off the field earlier. Now Emory Blake is hurt. Dyer has since returned. But right now Auburn facing a third and 12 from their own 48. Philip Lutzen Kirk in the H back sprinting onto the field. Try to trying to get him the play call here with 108 left in the quarter. Trotter surveys the field that's intercepted. It's picked off as Trotter makes a terrible mistake. South Carolina then fumbles the football. Lutzen Kirk and falls on it. And it's Auburn football. It was CC Whitlock on the pick. And then he coughed it up. You have got to be kidding me. This, this is a, a terrible throw by Barrett Trotter. You see, I don't, I don't know what he was looking at, but he hit CC Whitlock right in the chest. He didn't even see him, I don't think. And then CC Whitlock with a nice return. He's got to protect that football. You're running back now. Protect that ball. Comes on out and then back to Lutzenkirchen to recover it. Just a, a very fortunate play for Auburn because it was a terrible decision by Barrett Trotter. And C.C. Whitlock, that ball was stripped and recovered by Lutzen Kirker. What a great play. And now Melvin Ingram is being looked at on a 50. South Carolina's defensive star. All he's done today has been seven tackles, three and a half sacks, and a pick. 11 QB pressures.
So it looks as though Ingram is okay. 50 seconds to play in the third. And South Carolina in front 13 tonight. Now we haven't seen many points today, but it has been wild <laughs> back and forth. Lutz and Kirkin making the great play there to get the football back to strip and the recovery. I don't think Steve Spurrier thought it was a great play. Boy, you go from one high to one extreme to the other. This is first and ten. Dyer on the take. Inside Gamecocks territory to the 41. As he picks up 11 and an Auburn first down. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston from Columbia. 10th ranked South Carolina having their hands full today against this young team from Auburn, the defending national champions. Their first road test of the season in the SEC. Right now, first and 10. From the 41, Michael Dyer up the gut. Inside the 40, down to the 38. Picks up two as we reach the end of the quarter. We are through three here in Columbia with your score. South Carolina 13 and Auburn 9. We'll return to williams Bryce Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. This is the Home Depot SEC on CBS. multiple lead changes and right now South Carolina leading Auburn 13 to 9 as we begin the fourth quarter Spiro Ditas alongside Steve Berline uh, both offenses have struggled the defenses have really had control in this game Auburn has the football turned it over got it back and now a chance to retake the lead I'll tell you what a sequence of events favoring Auburn you know Steve Spurrier has got to have unbelievable emotions right now because what happened he thinks he gets a big turnover the big interception off the bad decision by Barrett Trotter and all of a sudden it's back Lutz and Kirkin makes the great strip and fumble recovery and now Auburn back in control inside the 40 yard line looking good with all the momentum again it's a it's a game of momentum and you got to favor Auburn right now Melvin Ingram was hurt Right at the end of that quarter, he is okay and is on the field here to start the fourth. Second and seven for the Tigers. McCaleb has room. He's down to nearly the 30. And right at the first down marker as he picks up eight. And let's see here. Looks as though he is just short of that first down marker. It's third and less than a yard. Here's Dyer. He'll move the chains inside the 30 and down to the 29. Well, you got to give Michael Dyer credit, too. He's gotten this one out. He's a tough kid. He's gone off the field a couple of times with what looked to be a, a foot or ankle or something of that nature, but he's come back in and run the football hard. Trotter giving to Dyer. Dyer second burst. He's still going. Antonio Allen trying to strip the football from the back as Dyer picks up 10. You want to earn some respect in the locker room from your teammates. Look at this second effort right here. He's hit once, twice, three times, and he's still refusing to go down. There had to be six or seven South Carolina defenders that had a shot at him, and he just kept those wheels moving. Nice pickup. They give Dyer nine yards, so he's inches short. He's got the first down here. Brought down at the 16-yard line after he picks up four yards. Dyer left the game momentarily earlier in the second half with a right ankle sprain. Steve, he's getting stronger as this game goes on. You see what he's done today. Look at those numbers. That is a, that is a workhorse day from Michael Dyer. He's going to be feeling it tomorrow. Here's McCaleb to the outside, nearly went head over heels. Chopped down at the 13. After he picks up three hard-fought yards, it was Gilmore who got to him. Boy, I'll tell you what, Stephon Gilmore with the up in there, boy. 
I have no idea how McCaleb even knew where he was when he got up after that one. <laughs> Eighth play of the drive. It's been all run game so far for Auburn. Here's Dyer. And South Carolina holding defensively Melvin Ingram with another tackle. Steve Spurrier looking on has never beaten Auburn during his tenure here in Columbia. 10 and 7 all time against the Tigers. South Carolina's only beaten Auburn one time in their history. This is third and seven. Trotter flushed out, throwing off of his back foot. It's caught, intercepted by South Carolina. C.C. Whitlock with the pick in the end zone, and South Carolina gets it back. You have got to be kidding me, Barrett Trotter. Come on now, you're better than this. You're flush from the pocket, you're in good position, there's nobody open, you're under pressure. Don't throw it up for grabs. Boy, a great play by C.C. Whitlock. It's his second interception of the day. First one, he fumbled back. That one, great job hanging on to the football. And Steve, you wonder if he was in bounds when he had possession of it. He bobbled it for a moment. But it will be South Carolina football. Timeout. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Scoring summary. Cody Parkey starting things for Auburn. 21-yard field goal. Steven Garcia, one of his few positive plays today, finding Alshon Jeffrey for the 50-yard touchdown play in the first half, giving South Carolina its first lead. Their point after was blocked, and then Michael Dyer going airborne to answer for Auburn. What a back and forth game it's been all day. 15 yard run for the touchdown. Marcus Lattimore. And that is where we stand right now. 13 to 9, South Carolina. With 12 15 remaining in the fourth quarter. Officials are reviewing the interception by CC Whitlock, and the call will stand as the Gamecocks will get it from their own 20 yard line. Well, what a tremendous play by C.C. Whitlock. Again, one of those plays that uh, when you look at it, you say, how, how can you call it one way or the other? But I tell you, it was ruled as a touchdown on the field, so they would never overturn that. And Steve Bartrider has played well for the most part, but has made a couple of costly mistakes. And that one could come back to haunt the Tigers. Right now down four. Early stages of the fourth. First and ten, South Carolina. Trotter watches here as Garcia works from the shotgun. Going near side for four to the 24. Well, you know, Spiro, I, I, this has been really a, a case of which quarterback wants to give it up more than the other or which one doesn't want to win more than the other because both quarterbacks have made several questionable decisions with the opportunity to make good plays to make big plays and really control the game they basically handed it to their opposing team here's Garcia on second and six Lattimore to the 30 and very close to another South Carolina first down. He picks up six. I would venture to say that we're going to see a lot of Marcus Lattimore from this point forward. I don't think that uh, Steve Spurrier, you know, he called what he thought was a safe pass on that last interception by Steven Garcia. First down play action pass designed to only take a shot if the shot was there. you got to be smart with the football, and he, he made the bad decision. So I think we're going to see nothing but running from number 21 from this point forward. Lattimore had enough to move the chains. This is first and 10 from the 30. Garcia goes fade, trying to find Jeffrey on the sideline too far in front. It'll be second and 10. Told you about Garcia's tough week. Got the emotional news 
And his grandfather had passed away earlier this week in Tampa. Trying to put all that aside. Steve, it's tough to play quarterback under normal circumstances. Even tougher when you're dealing with personal issues like Garcia has this week. Yeah, no doubt. The, the, the issue of his grandfather, you can't ever minimize that. And then the pressure on him for his really poor performance last week against Vanderbilt. There's Garcia. Pocket collapses. He's sacked. Back at the 28-yard line, they lose a couple. And it'll be third and long. Well, I'm, I'm surprised that, you know, I made a pretty strong statement. I didn't think we'd see Garcia throwing the ball much anymore. And all of a sudden, two runs and two throws in a row, or two attempted passes in a row. Well, they had protected Garcia over the first four games. Different story today as this Auburn defense that had been poor through the first four weeks. A complete 180 here in Columbia. This is Garcia on third and 11. Hit as he released incomplete trying to find Lattimore. Well, he can't put that on Garcia. He took a shot on that one. It was a screen pass, one of those passes again where the offense just lets the rush, the pass rush go through and Darren Bates, number 25, had a clean run. At Steven Garcia, no chance to get that ball off. Quan Bray back deep to receive. Standing at his own 40. Sixth punt today by the Gamecocks. Bray lets it bounce. Takes a South Carolina roll and they pin it down at the 29 yard line. Under 10 minutes to play, a four point South Carolina lead. It's a patience from different people that I know that are our friends. Three of them are from our team. One of them is an NCAA bracelet. I have one that uh, supports our veterans, a uh, power bracelet. I think that's it. Yeah. Devin Taylor, the junior homegrown kid, South Carolina native, an all SEC defensive end for Steve Spurrier. That is a well rounded young man, a sack coming in. And a part of this very impressive front four defensively for the Gamecocks. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston, our entire CBS crew from Columbia, South Carolina. Auburn back onto the field offensively down four. Here's Michael Dyer on first down. Well, you never know when he's down. He just keeps those legs churning. Picks up six. Now he's got a very low center of gravity and great balance. And that's what keeps him just kind of bouncing off of people. He does, oh, in, in 244 career carries coming in this game, only 12 times was he hit for a loss. Dyer again needed to get to the 39 for the first down picks up five and an Auburn first down. Dyer the MVP of the BCS National Championship game last January capping off a remarkable freshman season. And he, he doesn't mess around. I mean it's a it's a quick decision and it's straight ahead. There's not a lot of moves. It's it's let me let me go right where I'm supposed to go. And I'm going to get what I can get. Dyer the featured back here. Picks up maybe three. And Antonio Allen assisting on the stop. Well, I, I, I'm very impressed by the patience of Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator for Auburn. They're, they're committed to this run. They've run the ball over 50 times today. This is second and 10. Dyer barely passed the line of scrimmage. After a pickup of a yard to the 41. Well, you got a big third down here. South Carolina is going to bring it with that front four. Trotter from the shotgun on third and nine. Auburn today, six of 15 on third downs.
They need to get to the 50. Trotter trying to find room. He's short. Got to the 48, a pickup of six. And you're going to see a great play by the freshman, Jadavian Clowney, off the right side of your screen here. Watch him. He comes up the field, realizes it's draw, and he's the one that runs down Barrett Trotter right there from behind. You see the athletic ability. This guy, this is a freshman now, six foot seven, 270 pounds, and he can run like the wind. Now, Clowney has been talked about as if he's a mythical figure, a true freshman here. As A. Sanders signals for the fair catch, deep inside South Carolina territory. 7.07 left to play in Columbia. The Gamecocks by four. It's the SEC on CBS with South Carolina leading by four points. We just mentioned to Davey and Clowney for more uh, South Carolina's true freshman defensive star. Here's Otis Livingston. Sparrow, you think he's a beast in the SEC? Let's take a look back to him as a senior just a year ago at Rock Hills High School in South Carolina where he was not only tough to block on defense, but oh, by the way, he was able to rush the ball in spot duty. 32 times, 277 yards and nine touchdowns. Guys are trying to get out of his way. And oh, by the way, no thoughts of him playing offense here. He's doing too well on defense. Spiro. Otis, thanks. Ellis Johnson, the associate head coach who handles the defense for Steve Spurrier, called Clowney the most destructive defensive force in the state of South Carolina, Steve, that he has seen since William the Refrigerator Perry. Well, you know, I, I, I lived in Charlotte for 15 years and just moved out to Southern California. This guy has legendary status already in that area. Rock Hill, just south of Charlotte. He is truly a legend in high school lore now already. Now watch this game packs offense here. Try to protect his four point lead. As we hit the seven minute mark in this fourth quarter. Coming up, we'll have the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. South Carolina, the 10th ranked team in the country, leading the defending national champions 13 to 9. There's Gene Chiswick, third year at the helm of Auburn. A young football team had 24 seniors on that championship team a year ago. A completely different story here in 2011. This is Garcia on second and 12, wrapped up at the 12 by Darren Bates, the outside linebacker. Auburn, two timeouts remaining. South Carolina with all three at their disposal. This will be third and 10 as we hit the six minute mark. All right, well, you gotta be very careful here, Steven Garcia, if you get a chance to throw the football, I would imagine it'll be a screen or a draw play. Can't do anything dumb here, though. Garcia's thrown two picks today. Nine for the season. And now Spurrier will burn a timeout. Down to 542 to play. South Carolina with a four-point lead. Bill Trent Richardson in the Crimson Tide against Chris Rainey and the Florida Gators. They'll kick tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time. All that speed, both sides of the football on full display tonight. And you can say, you can definitely see that these guys are both dual threats. They catch the ball, they run the ball, they're scoring machines. Trent Richardson, nine touchdowns. Tied for the SEC lead with Marcus Lattimore coming into today. Well, Lattimore, a slow start here, but has come on. 15-yard touchdown run in the second half. And that's been the difference right now. Carolina up 13-9, but faced with a third and 10 from just inside their 12. Right there, Alshon Jeffrey. Gonna have a nice matchup on him. Garcia under pressure. Incomplete. Or everyone gasping as Garcia threw that from his back foot as the Gamecocks will punt. Well, you're gonna see some pressure 
on Steven Garcia here for sure. Not a lot of help there up front. That was Mr. Sharvin Bell. So Darren middle. Bates, Steve, you're right. Yeah, right off the gut, untouched. Very well called, well timed blitz by Ted Roof and the Auburn defense right there. Caught South Carolina totally off guard. So Scribner Howard with the punt. And a fair catch by Quan Bray. Let's go to New York and an update with Tim Brando. Ohio State, fellas, was on the brink of being shut out at home for the first time since 1982. But in the closing seconds, Joe Bowserman hit Evan Spencer for a touchdown. Still, Mark D'Antonio, the former Buckeye defensive coordinator on the 0-2 national title team, goes in to get the win, 10-7. Back to you. Tim, thanks. 527 left to play, fourth quarter. First win for Michigan State over Ohio State since 99. Barrett Trotter, the man replacing Cam Newton, a redshirt junior, back onto the field with his offense. An auspicious start here. Full start. Number four of the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Please put the game clock at five minutes and 27 seconds. Stay tuned for the Jeep Post Game Show on CBS Sports. Now Barrett Trotter's going to have to make some plays through the air. He's only thrown for 82 yards today, two interceptions, but at some point, he's got to start making some plays. This is Dyer on first and 15, gets to the 40 for a pickup of two. And when you talk about making plays in the passing game, we do not see Emory Blake out there on the outside. The go-to guy, Gene Chizik said he is the go-to guy for the Auburn offense. And some other younger players are going to have to step up. This is second and 13. They go to a bunch formation. Trotter hit from the back. Under throws his intended receiver, Travante Stallworth. So Steve just mentioned Emory Blake, their stud wide receiver, hurting a knee earlier in the half, has yet to return. And right now, Auburn, the defending national champions, have it. 452 left in a hostile environment here, down 13 to 9. Trotter from the shotgun on third and 13 from the 40. Has time. It's caught inside South Carolina territory. D'Angelo Benton for 15 yards and a first down. That's D'Angelo Benton's second catch of the season. And what a big time right there coming up with a great coverage by Stephon Gilmore. But what a nice conversion for Auburn. Trotter keeps it on the ground to Dyer on first and ten. Picks up one, maybe two. Jadavian Clowney got there first for the Gamecocks. Auburn a year ago, a team laden with seniors. A school record 24. Now a young team on the road in conference play for the first time this season. Trotter finding Dyer. Picks up five. Auburn now well over 80 plays on the day. Okay, South Carolina not even 40, so they've doubled the amount of plays. Injured Gamecocks defender is Kelsey Quarles, the tackle. A freshman out of Hodges, South Carolina. As the South Carolina training staff onto the field. Timeout. Kelsey Quarles, South Carolina native, a freshman for Steve Spurrier. Looks like he's okay. So 4.02 left on the clock. Auburn driving. They'll have it here, Steve. Third down, down four with two timeouts left. Well, you're definitely in four down territory for Auburn right now if for some reason they don't pick this up. 
they'll go for it on fourth down I'm sure Kyle Frazier the freshman in for a huge play keeps it himself he's right at the marker and it looks as though he has it and he does Oh, they talked about increasing this young man's workload in a huge spot today. Able to move the chains, it'll be first and ten. Frazier nearly 50 yards on the ground. Here's try to run first and ten. Play action. Incomplete. Intended for Benton. Well, you can't you can't imagine that D'Angelo Benton and Barrett Trotter have had many reps together. Benton replacing the standout go to wide receiver Emory Blake. It didn't look like they were on the same page on that pass. Trotter calls out the play, second and ten from the Gamecocks, 34. Trotter. Buried in the backfield. Devin Taylor, the all SEC defensive end, got there for South Carolina. What a nice play by Devin Taylor as the clock ticks down to toward three minutes. Auburn, two timeouts left. But Devin Taylor was not fooled on that attempted option play by Barrett Trotter. And look at the discrepancy in total plays. This is third and nine. Trotter from the shotgun. Michaela inside the 25 has the first down and a lot more down to the 12 as he picks up 19 huge yards. Oh, what a great time for Monterey for Ontario. Michaela to pop one off the left side. You see him slash across the backfield and nice hole off the left side of that line. Give credit to Jared Cooper and A.J. Green and company, that offensive line popping him through there. Injured player on the field. As the South Carolina training staff has been busy here. Well, they need to score a touchdown because of this missed extra point by Cody Parkey early in this game. And that was after South Carolina had already missed an extra point as well. But that obviously makes it a, a four-point ball game. Auburn thinking touchdown all the way. You see the drive so far is Byron McKnight, one of the backup defensive ends for Steve Spurrier, continues to be looked at. Clock stopped at 2.47 remaining, fourth quarter. You know, a team that has 87 plays offensively as we... See Byron McKnight get up and walk off the field, but 87 plays. You would think that that translates to more than nine points in a football game. And I'll tell you, Auburn has done a complete reversal of of their normal situation. You look at the Utah State, Mississippi State, and Clemson games. Those teams all had over 80 plays against them, while the most that Auburn's had in any game prior to this one this year is 62 plays. Auburn with two timeouts remaining. This is first and 10 from the South Carolina 14. McCaleb in motion. Trotter faking to McCaleb gives to Dyer. He's to the 10. Pick up of four. Stop by McMahon. And what a conference victory this would be for Gene Chiswick's Tigers. All the youth, all the inexperience. Chiswick told us you know, our guys know what great looks like, but they have to go out and do it. After watching that senior laden team a year ago, this is Dyer on second down. Rodney Polk to stop. And a huge third down play coming up. Well, Spiro, this is unfamiliar territory for South Carolina. They're, they're in position to control their own destiny. If they want to be a championship team, this is the kind of stop they've got to make. They know Auburn has to score a touchdown here. They've got to stand up and make it happen in their favor. Trotter from the shotgun on third and five. Here comes Ingram. It's caught. Ludson Kirkin drops it in the end zone, and they say touchdown. Barry. 
Larry Trotter to Philip Lutzenkirk in on a wild 15-yard pass play, and Auburn has retaken the lead. And look at the shot that Trotter took from Melvin Ingram, and that ball was stripped right as Lutzenkirk was going into the end zone by by South Carolina. You're going to see. Watch the shot though off the edge from Melvin Ingram right there. Boom. Barrett Trotter unbelievably gets that ball off and Lutzenkirk and very fortunate to fall on this ball and gain possession. It's under further review. That ball was knocked out by Reginald Bowens. Lutzenkirk and I think controlled it before he went out of bounds. Now if he didn't it would obviously be ruled a touchback. That's what Steve Spurrier is hoping for but I think it's a it's in vain right now. Well, Lutzenkirk was a stretch last week with injury. And that is Lutzen Kirkin's 10th career touchdown, which ties the Auburn all time tight end record with Robert Johnson. But look at that, just standing in there. Boy, it's tough to play quarterback when there's a guy running free at you like that. But Trotter, not phased. And then great presence by Lutzen Kirkin to bring that ball in before he rolled out of bounds, I believe. Great timing for the call to the, the, the flow way right and Lutzen Kirkin slips underneath catches South Carolina not playing disciplined football. They got caught up in the flow. Mm. What do you think? I don't think there's any doubt he was in. I think he had control of that. Tough to overturn that call. The call in the field is a recovery and touchdown for Auburn. And more our referee continues to await the official word from the replay booth but what poise by Barry Trotter the first year starter taking over for Cam Newton redshirt junior he knew Ingram was coming with everything he had he stayed in there and made the tough throw to Lutz and Kirk. well let's assume that this touchdown stands now you got a minute 38 if you're South Carolina you can see Lutz and Kirk and just slipped just slipped underneath and the ball pops Let's see if he gets complete control and remember now it was ruled a touchdown as we've stated so it's got to be obvious that he wasn't in bounds with control of that football so he pulls it into the chest he hits mm. the line I think it's pretty hard to overturn that one after further review the ruling on the field is confirmed Not very close but the call will stand touchdown Auburn. And now you're, you're Steve Spurrier. You're sitting there looking at 138 left. You've got two timeouts, but you've got to count on Steven Garcia. And now if you're Steven Garcia, you're excited about the opportunity to prove yourself. This extra point is huge, too. Now Parkey has missed one already today. Huge point after attempt here to push this to a three-point lead. A hold is down, and Parkey is good. As the defending national champion, the Auburn Tigers, up three with a minute 38 on the clock. And now all the pressure and all the eyes in this stadium on that man, a 50-year senior, Steven Garcia. Multiple interceptions. He's made all kinds of mistakes. Can he lead this offense down to the field and in the field goal range? Well, if I'm Steven Garcia, I'm grateful for this opportunity because I know that I have not played very well. And as a quarterback, we've all been in positions like that where you haven't had a very good day. You've not done things the way you expected to. But the bottom line is you want that ball in your hands with a chance to win the ball game at the end of the game. This is what we this is what we quarterbacks live for. The opportunity in the last two minutes to drive the length of the field and either tie or win the football game. We'll see how Steven Garcia responds here. Spiro Dita, Steve Berline, Otis Livingston, our entire crew here from Columbia. South Carolina ranked 10th in the country, down three here at home. They've got two timeouts left, Auburn with two as well. At a minute 38 left in the fourth. What can you say about Auburn though now as well? I mean, this is a this is a, a school and a team that just does not like losing football games. They refuse to be eliminated from a ball game. They keep on plugging and find a way to get it done. Cody Parkey on the kick.
booming kick by Parkey through the end zone. As South Carolina will take over with Steven Garcia at their own 20. Again, the Gamecocks with two timeouts. Auburn with two as well. Steve, what about strategy here? Well, the strategy is it is what it is. You, you, you're you're just trying to figure out what your best plays are in this situation. The plays that your quarterback is going to be most comfortable uh, and give your playmakers a chance to get the ball in space. And most of the time, a two-minute drive, you'll start with a screen pass or a draw play to your number one running back. You see Marcus Lattimore in the backfield right there. I would expect a draw or a screen to start this drive. Garcia from the shotgun on first and ten under pressure. He eludes the first tackler, rolling to the sideline. Off balance throw, nearly intercepted by Thorpe. As Alshon Jeffrey may have saved the pick. He really Personal did. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 13 mm. on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. And a huge penalty, roughing the passer. Craig 15 Sanders. yards in a first down. Craig Sanders, number 13, is who they called it on. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was the, the going a little bit late, but low was the key. Launching himself low into the lower body of Steven Garcia. So the penalty gives the Gamecocks a first and 10 from their own 35. Garcia from the shotgun. Under pressure, eluding the first man. He'll throw across his body and incomplete. It's the second time that Corey Lemonier has had him right in his grasp and has been unable to bring him down to the turf. Uh, good job, Steven Garcia, making, not making a bad play worse. Realized under pressure, he did what he should have done on the last play, throw the ball away when you're under pressure. Against South Carolina with two timeouts left. They've got it at their own 35, a minute 18 remaining. Down three. Garcia. It's caught incomplete. Bruce Ellington had it for a split second, and then it was knocked to the floor. Well, nice defensive play, getting a hand in there, nice break on the ball. Ellington was who Garcia was going to all the way, and a super job knocking that ball out of there by Jermaine Whitehead, stripping it. Great coverage. Whitehead, the freshman. There's Alshon Jeffrey right there, matched up one on one. Third and ten, Garcia from the shotgun. Will keep it himself up past the 45, lunges to the 47, and has enough for the South Carolina first down. The clock stops here as they move the chains. South Carolina still with two timeouts left. And that's a great call by Steve Spurrier, who does call all the plays here for the Gamecocks, knowing that the last person they're going to be looking for is Steven Garcia on the run. Here's Garcia, first and ten, airing it out, sideline, incomplete. And then unable to find Jeffrey. It was Bell on the coverage. Well, this is what you got to do. You got to give your playmaker a chance to make a play, as he did earlier in the ball game. It was the exact same matchup. That ball just not quite high enough for Alshon Jeffrey to get up. He wasn't in the best position to go up and get that football. But I like the mentality. Take a shot when you get the right matchup. Well, all the question marks with Steve Spurrier's team have focused on his offense, and now they're under the gun, down three with 48 seconds left. Garcia, second and ten, markers fly. It's thrown incomplete. So we'll see what the penalty marker is about here. It was holding on the right tackle. And that's a decision that Gene Chids is going to have to make here. Do you accept it or do you make it a second and 20? Or do you keep it at third and 10? I think you're going to take the penalty in this situation. Holding number 78 of the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Second down. That's Cody Gibson, the redshirt freshman out of Tallahassee, the culprit. No doubt about it. It was an obvious hold. Referee had no choice. 
And Chiswick takes a penalty. Yes, it's much harder to convert 20 yards in two plays than it is to pick up 10 yards in one. So I agree with that call, that that decision 100%. South Carolina still with its two timeouts, down three, but 42 seconds left. Garcia on second and 20, across his body, incomplete, trying to find Lattimore. And you can hear the groans now from 80,000 plus. It'll be third and 20. Well, you know, Garcia is, he, he's only a little better than 50% passer. He's not incredibly accurate. And, and that's that's one of those situations where you you, 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 you know what you got. And, and he's going to make. Timeout, South Carolina. That is their second timeout of the second half. 30-second timeout. Now it's been a wild season for Gene Chiswick's Auburn Tigers back in the season opener. The Tigers scored two touchdowns in the final 207, including this run by Michael Dyer in a thrilling 42-38 win over Utah State. Then the following week, it was Ryan Smith saving the day against Mississippi State. Goal line stand as time expired to preserve a 41-34 win. So a young team, you'd expect them not to be very good in close games. They've been awfully good they, when the money's been on the table. They act like they are very comfortable in those situations. Now, th this is a this is the Auburn team that gave up over 600 yards to Clemson in their loss a couple weeks back. And, and, and to have people running through them the way that they have been this year, and as you said, they you know, squeaked out a couple of games there, but to be in position to win this ball game is amazing. Here you are, third and 20 now on the field. Steven Garcia under control. You hope, if you're South Carolina, that you've got one play in you. you got two plays to get it, but Steven Garcia's got to make a play or two here. South Carolina, one timeout left, third and 20 from the 35. Garcia, as whistles blow the play dead, A. Sanders on the catch. Looks like Auburn has burned a timeout. Timeout, Auburn. That is their second timeout of the second half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. And we'll take a look at where Auburn goes from here. A play against Arkansas, then the 12th ranked Gators, followed by a road game at LSU, an awfully tough stretch. In time for South Carolina. They've got a golden opportunity. They don't have to face Alabama, Steve, or LSU this season. But they're going to Tennessee where they're 1 in 14 in their last 15 times there. That's a tough place for them to win. There is no easy stretch in the SEC as no, we know, isn't. but you're right. To avoid Alabama and LSU in the same season and to be sitting where they're sitting, this is their golden opportunity to do something they've never done. And they're they're close to laying an egg here right now. I'm not saying that they can't win this game. Third and 20 with 36 seconds left. All they need is a field goal. But the way this offense has been producing today or not producing today, it, it's, it's a long shot at best that it's going to happen for them. So South Carolina 4-0 for the first time under Steve Spurrier. Up against it here, 36 seconds left, third and 20. Now they don't have to get it all in one play here now. They've got one timeout left. They, they want to get at least half of it back on this play. Garcia going middle, finds Jeffrey inside Auburn territory, and he's right at that first down marker. Well, I love what South Carolina did right there. They can't they can't spike the ball because it's short of the first down. It's They've got one down. timeout left. Down to 17 seconds. Lattimore up the middle has the first down, but they must burn the timeout. Only catch the first, so they won't have to burn it. Clock stops automatically. So they'll keep that timeout. Now they'll burn it here with 12 seconds mm. remaining. And Auburn up three points. Well, you know, Steve Spurrier had a plan, a great call. I love what they did with Alshon Jeffrey. Put him over on the left side where he has not been hardly at all today, if at all. And Garcia knows where the big man is. He comes across the middle. He's got a matchup against a corner that he has not gone up against today that doesn't know how to play him. That was Darren Bates, as we see. Jay Wooten getting ready on the sideline as long as a 49-yarder. 
but a great job by Garcia and Alshon Jeffrey hooking up on a big pass play and then knowing exactly what to do get up to the line they must have that second play called in the huddle Marcus Lattimore gets the first down but now we're in a situation where you've got 12 seconds you've got to get uh, at least you want you'd like to get about seven or eight more yards to give yourself a realistic shot at making this there's a there's a case to be made I would have thought in my if in my mind I was thinking they were going to try and spike the ball because they had time to get up and get set on the line then they could have completed the ball anywhere in the field and taken a timeout to set up the kick but Steve Spurrier had a plan I'm not going to question the ball coach so 10th ranked South Carolina out of timeouts down three with 12 seconds left in regulation Garcia Goes middle, incomplete. Eight seconds remaining. And Spiro, that was the exact same play. And Alshon Jeffrey was open every bit as much as he was the previous play. But we talked about Steven Garcia. He's a 50% passer. He's going to hit one. He's going to miss one. In that situation, he's got to make that throw. That's what you, you look for that opportunity. A guy open, you got to make the throw. Oh, high drama here in Columbia now. The Gamecocks out of timeouts. Down three with eight seconds remaining. Garcia. Off balance. Throws and completes inside the 30, but they run out of time. It was Bruce Ellington on the reception. But the South Carolina Gamecocks... It appears as though have run out of time. The conference here Spurrier, at about the 30. The Spurrier's begging for one set. He thinks that they got the first down and, and down with one or two seconds left on the clock. I, I think that the time that, that Garcia took to scramble and throw and then the run after the catch, I think it took up all the time, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And if they do get another chance, they are right inside Wooten's field goal range. As we take another look, Ellington with the catch. So he's, he's down with one second, but the, re, the human element, the referee blowing the whistle, I don't know if they're going to get it back to him. The clock showed one when he was down. The referee has informed Spurrier that there will be no time put on the clock, and Auburn has won this game in Columbia. Boy, I'll tell you, he's, he's definitely down with one second on the clock. But the question is, when, when was the whistle blown? When does the play end? So Steve Spurrier dejectedly will walk off the field. As South Carolina, the 10th ranked team in the country, is beaten this season for the first time. And let's talk, you know, you, you, you look at it and you say there was one second left, but the human element and the real time, I don't think there was a chance to stop that play. Time now for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Well, the play of the game has to look at look at Auburn. They had to answer. They had to make a touchdown. They had to score to, to, to win this ball game. Perfectly called play, timed, and executed almost. You had Ludson Kirkin almost let it get away from him, but he pulled it in. Barrett Trotter standing strong in the pocket. Auburn makes the play and wins the ball game. So for Steve Berline and Otis Livingston, this is Spiro Dinas saying so long from Columbia, where your final score, Auburn 16 and South Carolina 13. Tonight at 8 Eastern, it's the Home Depot SEC on CBS. His third-ranked Alabama clashes with 12th-ranked Florida. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship. We'll send you to Tim Brando and the Jeep Post Game Show right after this word from your local station.